Yes. Let's start our balance questions of TDS and then we'll get into the balance comprehensive questions to complete our syllabus. Yes. Let's look at question number two. Uh, yeah. It says examine whether the provisions of TDS will be attracted in the following cases and if so under which section. You are also required to determine the rate of TDS which is applicable in each cases assuming that the all payments are made to resident cases. Okay. The first scenario comes and says you are Mr. Ganesh who is an individual carrying on retail business with a turnover of 2.5 crores in the previous year 21-22. Your previous year? Previous previous year. Why is it given to you? Sorry. For hijacker cases, you need to check the turnover, right or no? Yes, sir. The turnover is 2.5 crores, which means you are covered under hijacker, not covered under hijacker. You are covered under hijacker cases. The nature of payments are given to you. It says contract payment for repair of residential house. Contract payment meaning 194C. But the payment is for residential house, meaning it goes under 194C or M? M. Why M? It's a personal purpose case. It's a personal purpose case. Therefore, it goes into 194M. As of now, this will go under 194M. The number is 5 lakh rupees. Therefore, TDS will not apply as of now. But we have a second transaction with the same Ganesh. So, let's understand. It says, payment of commission to Mr. Walish for business purposes. 194H. Commission cases 194H. It is set for business purpose. Therefore, it goes into 194H. TDS on this will be at the rate of 5%. Number is 400 or 4,000, 4,000, huh? number is 4,000, which means this is the only transaction left for 194M, the number is less than 50 lakh rupees, therefore TDS will become 0, yes or no, can we go to the next one, Mr. Rajesh, wholesale trader, turnover was 95 lakhs in the previous year, 21, 22, problem is, turnover is not exceeding 1 crore rupees, Contract payment is made for reconstruction of residential house. Turnover also did not cross. Payment is also for personal purpose. Therefore, this goes under 194. Um, look at the payments. It is 20 lakhs in Jan, 15 lakhs in Feb and 20 lakhs in March. Is it crossing 50? It's crossing 50. Therefore, TDS will be applicable at the rate of... Huh? TDS will be applicable at the rate of 5%. TDS will be applicable at the rate of 5% on 55 or 5 or 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 55 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 Mr. Sati, salaried individual, does he have a business turnover? No, which means he goes under 194. Mr. Satish is a salaried individual, which means business turnover not there. If business turnover not there, will you cover under hijacker? No, which means you'll go under 194. You will go under 194M. Payment of brokerage for buying a residential house, 51 lakhs. Applicable, not applicable, at the rate of, sorry, Mr. Dheeraj, pensioner, ah. pensioner meaning what, business turnover is not there, if business turnover not there, hijacker, not applicable, if hijacker not applicable, go under 194. Contract payment made during October to November for reconstruction of residential house, 48 lakh rupees. TDS applicable, not applicable. Bye. Done? An amount of 40,000 was paid to Mr. X on 1st July 2022 towards fees for professional service without deduction of tax at source. Subsequently, another payment of 50,000 was due to Mr. X on 28th February 2020. 3, from which tax at the rate of 7.5% amounting to 6750 on the entire amount of 90,000 was deducted. What is the 7.5%? Oh, my mistake. 
this is 10%. This is uh, 40 plus 59,000. Sorry. My mistake, you can change it in the book. It is 10% and 9,000. Okay. On the entire amount of 90,000 was deducted. However, this tax of 9,000 was deposited on 22 June 2023. You are required to compute the interest chargeable under 201. Basically, they are coming and saying, boss, I forgot to deduct TDS also. I forgot to deposit TDS also. First transaction is an amount of 40,000 rupees. First transaction is amount of 40,000 rupees. When should you have deducted TDS? On the date of deduction in the books, uh, date of credit in the books or payment, whichever is earlier. It is said on 1st July. Therefore, you should have deducted on 1st July. Forgot to deduct. When did you next deduct? On 20th February, you realized your mistake. On 20th February, you deducted including that 4,000. Including the 4,000. So, for the 4,000 rupees, you will pay at the rate of 1% for how many months? July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. 8 months. Number 320. Now look at the question. It comes and says, boss, on 20th February, you were supposed to make a payment of 90,000, which is nothing but 50,000 of current payment, 40,000 of old payment. In that, fully you deducted at 9,000. In that, fully you deducted 9,000, which means for that 50,000 worth of payment, have I done properly deduction? Have I done the deduction properly? Yes. I should have deducted on 20th February. I deducted on 20th February. Therefore, everything is perfect. No problem for me. Yes. The problem is coming that if you have deducted in the month of February, you should have deposited by 7th of March. 7th of March. When did he deposit? 22nd June, which means he delayed it for March, April, May, June. Four months. Correct. So, four months delay. He did not pay. Initially, he did not deduct. So, therefore, I, did, I levied an interest of 1%. This time, he did not pay. Therefore, the interest is 1.5%. On what amount? 4,000, 5,000, 9,000. 4,000, 5,000, 9,000. 9,000. Motta payment is on hold. Everything should have been paid by March. Did not pay anything. So, therefore, everything will be liable for interest. Number is? Huh? 540. Total panna 860. Yeah. This is how your answer will look like. Clear? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Mr. Mehta has made the following cash withdrawals from SBI Bank during the previous year, 22-23. Uh, same question, no? Huh? The same question in my book, no? Uh, then ignore. We did it yesterday. Next one. Mr. Sharma, resident Indian, age 77 years, gets pension of 52,000 from UP state government. Where are we? 194? Sir, ignore the section. What is the provision? Someone is getting a pension from government. Where have we learned about pension? Huh? 194P talks about the case where you receive pension income and along with interest income. Mr. Sharma, age 77 years. Here is where the target is. You should be more than 70. Five. You are 77 years getting a pension of 52,000 per month from UP state government. Same is credited to your savings bank account and SBI Lucknow branch. In addition, he also gets 8% of FD from the same bank on 20 lakh rupees. Out of the deposit of 20 lakh rupees, 2 lakh rupees represent 5 years term deposit made by him on 1-4. What is this 5 years term deposit? Two lakhs represent five years term deposit made by him on one four. If you have made the investment for short period, long period, long period, where will you go? Big big investments. Huh? Big big investments. Where will you get what? ATC. Five years term deposits made with the bank will be eligible for ATC. Interest on savings bank credited to SBI account is given as 9,500 rupees. 
he has totally earned two interest one is from fd one is from savings both are eligible for attt both are eligible for attt b you are resident senior citizen you are a resident senior citizen eligible for both attt b at the rate of 50000 rupees from the above facts you are required to compute the total income and the tax liability of sharma assuming he would have not opted for 115 bsc go ahead find the total income find the tax What are your incomes? Salary six lakh twenty four thousand. Six lakh twenty four thousand for those who forgot standard deduction. Five lakh seventy four thousand. Is there any other income for you? You have an IFOS income, one from FD, number is 20 lakhs into 8 percent, 1 lakh 60,000, then from savings, 9,500, total GTI, 7 lakh 43, 500 is your GTI, reduce, 80C number is one lakh fifty thousand. Uh, why ma two lakhs illa? Maximum relief. Eighty TTB. You have one lakh sixty nine five hundred of interest. You can maximum claim fifty thousand. So seven lakh forty three hundred minus two lakhs is five lakh forty three hundred five hundred. Five lakh forty three five hundred is your total income. What is the tax on this? Forty-three five hundred at the rate of twenty percent. Eight thousand seven hundred add ten thousand rupees. Therefore, eighteen thousand seven hundred add cess. Correct? Ah, rebate total nineteen four four. Nineteen four fifty. Done. Question number two. What would be the amount deductible by SBI, assuming that the same is a specified bank? Is Mr. Sharma required to file his return for the assessment year twenty three twenty four? If tax deductible at source has been fully deducted, what is the TDS to be deducted? What is the TDS to be deducted? The same amount you computed right now. 19450. What is the tax to be deducted? 19450. If the bank is already deducting the taxes for you, do you have to file a return? No. So you will not be required to file a return. Question number three. What would your answer be in question two? If fixed deposit of 20 lakhs was with Canara Bank and not SBI Bank and all other facts remaining the same, what will happen? What will happen? Huh? You will say 194p is not applicable because two different banks are there. 194p is not applicable because two different banks are there. So therefore, UP state government will deduct taxes under 192. SBI will deduct taxes. No, SBI only has a savings account. SBI only has a savings account. So SBI will not deduct any kind of taxes. Canara Bank will deduct on FD. Canara Bank will deduct on FD under section. Last question. Mr. Gupta is a resident Indian 
in retail business and his turnover for the financial year 21-22 is given as 12 crores. He regularly purchases goods from another resident, Mr. Agarwal, and wholesaler whose aggregate payments during the year was 95 lakhs. 20 lakhs is in June, 25 lakhs is in August, 22 lakhs is in November, and 28 lakhs is in March. Assume that the said amounts were credited to Mr. Agarwal in the same days. And Mr. Agarwal's turnover is given as 15 crores. Gupta's turnover is what? Agarwal's turnover is what? Are both more than 10 crores? Which means? Whether you apply TDS or TCS? Will you apply TDS or TCS? TDS. Who will do TDS? Gupta or Agarwala? Who will do TDS? Why? He is the one who is going to make the payment. So, Gupta is the one who is going to make the TDS. Number is 95 lakhs. 95 lakhs minus minus 50 lakhs will give you 45 lakhs at the rate of 0.1 percent. 45 lakhs into 0.1 percent number is 4500. TDS to be done by Gupta 4500. What would your answer be if Gupta's turnover was 8 crores all other facts remaining the same? TCS will apply this time it will be TCS collected by Agarwal amount is same 4500 what would be your answer be if pan has not been furnished by buyer or seller TDS will become 5 percent so 45 lakhs into 5 percent is 2 huh? lakh 20,000, 20, 25,000. If pan is not furnished by Agarwal to Gupta, Gupta will deduct TDS at the rate of 2 lakh 25,000. If pan is not given by Gupta to Agarwal, Agarwal will collect TDS at the rate of 1%. 45 lakhs into 1% will give you 45,000. Done. Done. Yes. Great. With this, your question bank is done. I think we have covered everything in the question bank except for the last two questions called as comprehensive questions. Ignore those two questions, people. Ignore those two questions. I'll give you a separate PDF. In the new PDF which I have right now, we have about eight questions. So we will solve all the eight questions today and then we'll go for the day. Okay. Before that, let's complete the balance of updated return. Tell me. Yeah. Great. Looking at the amendment which has come for the current year called as updated return. The logic of this return is actually kind of useless. Kind of useless. It might be there from exam perspective but not there from practical perspective. No one is going to opt for it in practical perspective. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Basically what happened is until now you discuss that there is something called as original return. Until now, you discuss something called as original return. And then we discussed what happens if you have filed an original return. You can file something called as revised return. Or you can file a belated return. Now, if you recall, I told you that the original return can be filed by original return can be filed by 31st July or 31st October. If you made some mistakes or you did not file your return, you can file it by 31st. December. What happens after 31st December became a big problem. 
what happens after 31st December became a big problem, not from us, for the department, for the department, because what happened is, let's say for example, you found out some mistakes, you found out some mistakes, understand the difference, no people, if you are on 31st October, how many more months do you have? Two more months. In this two more months, do you think you will be in a position to understand your return properly, understand what is happening in the return, if you have made any errors or not? No, no, generally not happens, because of which what happened, 31st December was not a very good due date for the assessees was not a very good due date for the assessees, which is where what happened is they came and said, Rahul, tomorrow if my assessment gets picked up, what happens? Assessment gets picked up, up you know? Assessing officer is verifying my return. Assessing officer is verifying my return. If my return is getting verified, what happens is, assessing officer found out that there are some mistakes in the return. There are some mistakes in the return. Mistakes like, for example, instead of showing 50,000 rupees, I showed it as 5,000 rupees. Instead of showing 50,000 rupees, I showed 5,000 rupees, tax was fallen because of which I paid lesser taxes. Now, in this case, what will the assessing officer come and say? If I had not picked up your return for assessment, what you would have done? You would have left it like that itself and you would have evaded taxes for me. So, therefore, you have cheated me. You have cheated me because of which I am going to levy something called as penalty. I am going to levy something called as penalty. Here is where income tax came and said, boss, let me give you one more window. Let me give you one more window. The window now comes and says, boss, if your due date is what? When does your assessment year start? 1st April 23. When does your assessment year start? 1st April 23. Income tax came and said, boss, let me give you two more years. Let me give you two more years. From 1st April 23 till 1st April. First April or 31st March, whatever. 31st March, what? Two more years from where? End of assessment year is what? Read the question properly. What did I say? Two years. Did I say two years from the start of the year? I said two years, meaning two years from the end of the assessment year. So what happened is income tax basically now comes and says, boss, if you are into, if you are into assessment year 23-24, if you are into assessment year 23-24, your due date for filing return is 31st July or 31st October. In case you belated, you can file it till 31st December. But don't worry, if you have made some mistakes and you have not found out those things, I am giving you two more years. I am giving you two more years. You can do it till 31st March 2026. 31st March 2026. I am giving you an extra window. In this extra window, what will happen? 31st December, Variko, you had no problem. 31st December of what? 2023. 31st December 2023, Variko, you didn't have a problem. From this 31st December 2023 to 31st December 2020, 31st March 2026, you can file a new return called as updated return. You can file a new return called as updated return where you can itself voluntarily come and say, sir, I made some mistakes. I made some mistakes. I want to correct my return. I want to correct my return and increase my income, pay more taxes to you. Increase my return and pay more taxes to you. Since I am itself voluntarily coming forward to you and telling you that I have to pay more taxes, please do not treat me as a cheater person and do not levy penalty. Do not levy penalty. Clear? Yes, this is what the whole agenda of an updated return is. So, updated return comes and says, from the end of the assessment year, you will get 24 months more. You will get 24 months more in which you can file your updated return. In which you can file your updated return. While they say 24 months, please do understand. December, Variko, you can itself do it voluntarily. You can itself do it voluntarily. This problem will only happen after December. It can happen only after December, practically. Practically, yes. Where you are going to file an updated return and voluntarily do what? Voluntarily do what? Inform the government of your missed out income. Inform the government of your missed out income and pay more taxes and pay more 
taxes this is what is called as updated return things were good till here things were good till here here is where the mess up happened here is where the mess up happened i came and told you what i came and told you what i am giving this return to you as an option for you to avoid penalty because you are going to voluntarily do it you are going to voluntarily do it which means this provision is basically coming and saying boss it can only be for department perspective it can only be from department perspective abhin and arthur rahul i filed an income my income was actually 50000 by mistake i put it as 5 lakhs by mistake i put it as 5 lakhs here i want to reduce my taxes or increase my taxes not possible not possible okay if you are making some mistake please correct it by 31st december please make corrected by 31st december ah if you had 50000 and want to make it 5 lakhs good come okay so the provision basically comes and says this updated return cannot be filed when you are going to reduce your income or claim more refund reduce your income or claim more refund done i will say rahul i have no income i have no income i have loss i have loss meaning i have loss of 5 lakh rupees i now want to make it 50 lakh rupees allowed not allowed not allowed they came and said boss if you have a loss of 5 lakh rupees if you want to make it 50 lakhs definitely not allowed okay rahul i have a loss of 5 lakh rupees i want to make it 4 lakh rupees loss allowed no are you paying something to government even if you are losing something no worries i will not give a updated return rahul i have a 5 lakhs of loss i want to make it 2 lakhs income can i file yes why because now you will pay taxes because now you will pay taxes so provisions are basically coming and saying boss this has to be only department friendly this has to be only department friendly meaning if you are going to reduce your income not allowed if you are going to claim more refund not allowed if you are going to increase your income allowed if you are going to reverse your loss to income allowed if you are going to reverse your loss but make it lower loss not allowed if you are going to increase your loss not allowed clear these are what the provisions come and say here the biggest problem which is there is they have given a due date of 24 months they have given a due date of 24 months if you actually go and understand your final level portion you will realize that the assessment due date itself is 12 months only the assessment due date itself is 12 months idile june le they have to issue the notice to you and the worst provision in this is coming and saying boss if your return gets picked up for assessment then no updated return for you what what if your return gets picked up for assessment no updated return for you meaning 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 if your return got picked up if your return got picked up and now you are filing an updated return you are basically going and telling what sir i now know that i am going to get a penalty so i am still saving myself not allowed not allowed so they are coming and saying boss if your return gets picked up for assessment pay penalty no worries i will catch hold of your neck and i will ask you to pay penalty no updated return permitted for you technically meaning when are you going to last file your return legally december when does the department have to issue a notice to you when does the department have to issue a notice to you june june which means if you file an updated then okay if you file it after june cannot do because assessment notice would have come this one no this one no hey rahul assessment notice did not come will you file a return one da pick up ana porudella which means someone will never know about it yes or no if june you notice did not come provisions come and say boss notice did not come meaning assessment cannot be picked up if assessment itself is not going to be picked up after june will you go and voluntarily come and say break my head which means the only window you have for filing an updated return practically is from december to appo enadhu 24 months unaga correct ah useless of the provisions and you know the why useless it is it is not because of this it is not because of this they are coming and saying boss if you file an updated return i will not just ask you to pay tax that you anyway have to pay that you anyway have to pay i will not ask you to pay interest because that also you anyway have to pay a hey, you avoided tax okay you did not pay tax so you will have interest also that also is okay my problem will come because i'll come and say boss if after december you file an updated return if after december you file an updated return you have to pay 125% of your tax and interest how much how much pay 25 extra to me pay 25 extra to me if you file after december if you file after december they are coming and saying boss if you are going to file an updated return if you are going to file an updated return whatever tax and interest you have whatever tax and interest you have 
add both together pay 125 percent of that to me pay 125 percent of that to me until 31st march 25 until 31st march 25 they are coming and saying boss within 12 months if you file an updated return it is 125 percent if you file it after 12 months before 24 months you have to pay 150 percent okay now 150 percent so basically they are coming and saying boss the timeline is like this you are on 1st april of 23 this is your start of ay this is your start of ay until 31st october you will file original return until 31st december you will file revised or belated return yes or no yes or no until 31st march uh, this is 23 no this is 23 uh, until 31st march 25 until 31st march 25 if you file an updated return you will have to pay 125 percent of the tax plus interest 125 percent of the tax plus interest if you file a return between 31st march 25 to 31st march 26 then you have to pay 150 percent of the tax and interest who the hell will file this updated return depends on the assessing officer he can levy up to 50 percent of the tax payable to 120 200 percent of the tax payable okay the logic is very simple people if you have already got picked up for assessment you itself know nothing can happen which means you need to pay penalty which means the only window which you have is from december to june in this window if you feel like voluntarily going and breaking your head go and file an updated return go and file an updated return if not after june anyway you will not be caught why the hell will you go and you will pay 125 or 150 percent of tax unnecessarily when government itself is not coming and catching your neck will you itself already go and say i am a very good citizen of india i will pay extra 150 to you useless provisions okay this is also not the worst part the worst part comes and says okay rahul you did not file you did not get picked up for assessment you did not get picked up for assessment and for some reason you are that smart enough that you went and you voluntarily gave your neck to him saying i will file an updated return i will file an updated return provisions now come and say boss if you file an updated return and i did not pick you for assessment earlier now i have all the rights to pick you for assessment which means the assessment timelines will again restart for you from the date on which the updated return is filed which means you would self voluntarily go and say sir in the sir return na tappa panirke then he will come and say idu tappa adu tappa idu purchava where the hell is assessi friendly ane therila i i don't know one place where it is assessi friendly everything is useless here every single thing is useless provisions are basically like this provisions are basically like this practically speaking this will never be applied never be applied no one will take that chance because you itself voluntarily go and the problem is no it's humans right today you voluntarily go and file an updated return what will happen tomorrow they'll pick you for assessment for the current year alone correct huh? no he knows now that you are a cheater person which means every year he'll pick up which means every year he'll come and say hey in the version he tappa panirkya maybe in last four years also you made a mistake let me reopen all your assessments niye voluntarily edhuk poradha yes or no never happening in the practical world because it cannot make sense it cannot make sense you levying 125 percent and 150 percent itself no one will agree yes or no yes or no this is what the provisions of updated return says any doubts no let's understand how the interest computation will happen because that is where the challenge is that is where the challenge is you will need to understand how the interest computation happens because what has happened you might have earlier already paid an interest you might have earlier already paid an interest now you are going to pay further interest so you are going to levy 125 percent on the earlier interest also or only on the new interest only on the new interest only on the new interest they are asking you to pay 125 percent of the extra interest which you are going to pay and the extra tax which you are going to pay okay so we need to understand how that extra interest and how the extra tax will be computed but until now the provisions are clear to you yes let's read the provisions
where the due date for filing the revised return or belated return has also lapsed. Any person may at his option furnish an updated return of income before 24 months from the end of the relevant assessment year, which means for your assessment year 23, 24, it will become 31st March 2026. 26. The option is available whether or not the person has filed an original return, belated return or revised return. You did not file anything, no problem, you can still apply. You have filed everything, so you can still apply. At the end of the day, government is getting more money. Updated return is only permissible when there is an additional tax payable. That means the above provisions cannot apply in case the updated return is a lost return, will decrease the tax liability compared to what was originally filed or results in an additional refund compared to the earlier return where the original return filed was a lost return updated return can be filed if such updated return results in an income it has to change from loss to income completely it cannot be decrease of loss alone it has to change to an income you should come to tax liable you should come to tax payable in such a case the updated return needs to also be furnished for the subsequent device where the loss or unabsorbed depreciation was utilized and now needs to be withdrawn what are they coming and saying rahul this year i showed a four lakhs loss obviously i will not keep it with myself what will i do I will set it off in the subsequent years, correct or not. So what is going to happen? If today I am going to change this return, my loss is also changed there. So there also I need to file an updated return and there also I need to disclose an income. Now because I am disclosing an income, there also I need to pay 125 and 130, uh, 150%. Yes or no? Next, an updated return cannot be filed for the subject AY in case the updated return is already filed for the assessment year. Hey, you can make a mistake once, cannot make mistake twice. Okay, you cannot come and say 50,000 I made to 5 lakhs, now I want to make it 50 lakhs. File it once. Next time, because anyway I will catch hold of you in assessment. The moment you file a return, I am going to catch hold of you in assessment. If the 5 lakhs has to become 50 lakhs, no worries. Come to me, I will pay an NF penalty for you. I will put in an extra penalty for you. Updated return only once available. Only once available. Assessment proceedings is pending initiated for the subject. AY. If I have opened up your assessment, then in that case, no updated return. Clear? Yes, from inter-syllabus, this is what is there from exam perspective. Final level, you will understand a lot more conditions. Survey, search, all those extra things will come for you. Inter-level, this is what the provisions are. Now, let's understand what happens in the 25 and 30 per, 50%. It says, where the updated return results in an additional tax payable. It results in an additional tax payable. You are required to discharge them as follows. You are required to discharge them as follows. If it was filed before 12 months from the end of the subject AY, meaning... 31st March 25, if it was filed before 31st March 25, you will have to pay 25% of the additional tax and interest extra. It's additional tax people, which means you have to pay 125%, 100% plus extra 25%. If you are going to file it after 12 months, but before 24 months of the subject AY, you need to pay 50% extra, meaning 100% already there plus 50% extra. Now you need to understand how this, this additional tax and additional interest work, correct? Yes. See this. This is how your additional tax and interest will work. I will ask you a simple question. Tell me, did you file a return earlier or did not file a return at all? Did not file a return at all. I will ask you a simple question. Let's say 31st December, Variko, you did not file a return itself because you thought that the income is less than 2,50,000, no return filed. Subsequently, you realize, no, no, boss, by mistake, 2,50,000 you showed, actually it was 25 lakhs. Actually it was 25 lakhs. In this case, did you file a return? No, you did not file a return. In that case, how will the additional tax be computed? They will say compute the actual tax. Compute the actual tax. Actual tax meaning? As per the latest return. In updated return, what you are going to pay? In updated return, what you are going to pay? Reduce whatever is the advance tax which you might have paid in April. Might have paid in April. Uh, sorry, April. PY. Reduce whatever TDS, TCS is showing in your 26 years. Reduce all your re relief under 89. Reduce your AMT credit. This will be called as your additional tax payable in simple terms let's say for example i filed a return with nothing i'm sorry i did not file a return itself because i thought tax is zero my tax is zero suddenly my tax became 25 lakhs my suddenly tax became 25 lakhs in this case what will i do 25 lakhs is my new tax old tax is zero therefore additionally i have to pay 25 lakhs on this i will levy 25 percent or 50 percent clear clear yes next one let's say you filed a return Let's say you filed a return. You have filed a return, but now you are going to change your income. Now you are going to change your income. What will you do? Simply file a new return. In that new return, what will be your new tax? What will be your new tax? Minus whatever taxes you paid earlier. Minus whatever taxes you paid earlier and showed it in your return. In your first return. 
whatever taxes you showed in your first return will be the base benchmark for you minus whatever taxes you are going to pay now that will be the additional tax payable that will be the additional tax payable simple logic clear look at the thing it says tax as per the updated return reduce your advance tax tds tcs relief self assessment tax which you paid in the earlier return which you paid in the earlier return minus any kind of advance tax relief and all not claimed in the earlier return this is what you paid extra this is what you paid extra let's say for example earlier you showed an income of 5 lakh rupees you showed an income of 5 lakh rupees now you are going to show an income of 10 lakh rupees in 5 lakh rupees would you have any paid any taxes no so what will come and say tax on 10 lakh rupees minus tax paid earlier zero but this 10 lakh rupees now you have to pay tax that you have to pay tax that will be coming in the second line that will be coming in the second line what you paid right now because obviously you know if you are filing a return you cannot file a demand return you have to file a paid return correct or not so whatever taxes you paid subsequently is what they are telling and then rest any kind of issued uh, any kind of refund which was issued by the department let's say for example earlier you paid at you paid you showed income of 5 lakh rupees your 26 as was showing zero i'm sorry your 26 as was showing 10 lakh rupees you would have got a refund of 10 lakhs now that has already come to your pocket that also you need to give back to the department that also you need to give back to the department so they saying add that back add that back clear yes 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 can we do some examples example number 1 example number 1 what has happened is you have filed no return you have filed no return you filed no return now you realize that your total income is 25 lakh rupees how much is the total income 25 lakh rupees this is fully salaries you by mistakely forgot to show your salary income you by mistakely forgot to show your salaries income so therefore 26 years is also showing zero meaning you have no tds paid you have no advance tax paid nothing paid what is your additional tax payable this is your total income da you initially filed no return now you figured out that your total income is 25 lakh rupees and you have paid zero taxes you have paid zero taxes what is your additional tax payable Fifty thousand is already considered. Five lakh sixty-two. Five lakh eighty-five. Because in a ma. What is the tax payable? Five lakh eighty-five. Eighty-five. Because you did not opt for one hundred five BSC. Because <laughs> calculator tap. Did you check for one hundred five BSC? Uh, now checking, ah. Uh. useless this is day 8 uh, day 5 uh. day 8 uh. what day is it we are in day uh, we are in day 7 spoken day 1 that 115 bs is important inno poitt irukku ha 5 lakh because you did a total income of 25 lakh 50000 this is your income as per old regime 
which means you would have already claimed standard deduction. If you are going into 115 BAC, you need to add back 50,000. As per old regime, what is the tax? As per new regime, what is the tax? Five lakh eighty five thousand in old regime. New regime five lakh fourteen. Ten lakhs into thirty percent. Uh, ten point five lakhs into thirty percent plus one lakh eighty seven five hundred number is. Nada prachna. Ten point five lakhs into thirty percent number is. Three. Three lakh fifteen thousand. Add one lakh eighty seven thousand five hundred. 5 lakh 2500 add says 5 lakh huh, number 22600 we did the same question last time if you recall I think on day 2 or day 3, we did the same kind of question where I asked you to compute the tax liability. You first computed on old regime, forgot new regime. In new regime also, you took the same total income and you computed. Nyamu Girka. Keep carrying the mistake until exams. Wonderful only it will go. Okay. So, what is going to happen is you have now disclosed yourself as a total income of 25 lakh 50,000. You are going to disclose a total income of 25 lakh 50,000 with a tax payable of 5 lakh 22,600. Have you paid any taxes earlier? No. Have you? Uh, do you have anything in your TDS? No. Do you have anything in advance tax? No. So therefore, nothing will be reduced and therefore your additional tax payable is 5 lakh 22,600. Let's say for example, you are going to file your return on 31st December 2024. 31st December 2024. How much will you pay? Number. Thirty first December twenty twenty four. You are going to thirty uh, first December twenty twenty four. You are going to file an updated return. How much is the tax which you will pay? Why da? What is your assessment year? Uh, what is your last date for filing revised return? 31st December even I know, 2020. 31st December 23. Now you are filing it on 31st December 24, which means you are filing an updated return. Updated return you have to pay 125 percent. Number is? Clear, not clear? Clear? This has to be paid before 31st December 24. Right. This has to be paid before 31st December 24 so that you can file your return. So that you can file your return. You cannot file a return with demand payable. So you will you'll make this payment of 31st December 24. Clear? Yes? Example number 2. You now realize that your total income is 25,50,000. You now realize that your total income is 25,50,000 which is from salaries as per new regime. Nane Soledra. Salaries as per new regime. Earlier you disclosed a total income in your revised return. In your revised return you disclosed a total income of 15,20,000. You disclosed a total income of 15,20,000 in your in your revised return and whatever was the tax payable on this you paid it before the due date of filing of return whatever is the tax payable you paid it before the due date of filing of return compute the additional tax payable 
इफ यू आर गोइंग टू फाइल द रिटर्न ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सिक्स 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 नाइन राउंड ऑफ पनिया राउंड ऑफ पनिया यस यू ऑलरेडी नो द टैक्स ऑन द टोटल इनकम ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड फ्रॉम द टॉप आंसर विच इज फाइव लैख ट्वेंटी टू सिक्स हंड्रेड सो यू आर रिक्वायर्ड टू पे फाइव लैख ट्वेंटी टू सिक्स हंड्रेड बट यू हैड ओनली पेड हाउ मच Fifteen lakh twenty thousand into twenty thousand into thirty percent is six thousand plus one lakh eighty seven five hundred is one lakh ninety three five hundred plus four percent says, huh? Two lakh one thousand two forty. You had by revised return paid two lakh one thousand two forty. You were required to pay five lakh twenty two six hundred, which means additionally I will expect you to pay three lakh twenty one twenty one thousand three sixty. Three lakh twenty one thousand three sixty is what I will expect you to pay. When are you ready to pay this? You are going to pay it only on thirty first December twenty twenty six in the form of updated return. This is after twelve months. Before twelve months, after twelve months, so you have to pay one fifty percent of this number. Four eighty two zero four zero. Clear. This is how you need to compute your additional tax payable. Any doubts? No. Can we go to additional interest? Yes. Additional interest. This is basically coming and saying, if no return was filed earlier, if no return was filed earlier, how do you compute? Please understand, people. Have you filed a return earlier? Have you filed a return earlier? No. Now you are going to file an updated return, which technically means you should have filed a return. You should have filed a return, but you forgot to file a return, which means you have delayed in filing a return. You have. Belated in filing a return. Should I levy two thirty four a? Yes. From what to what period? From what to what period? Uh, from the due date of original return till the date on which you file your updated return. From the due date of original return till the date on which you file your. updated return because you were obligated to file and return but you forgot to file a return so i will levy 234a from the original return till the due date of filing your updated return clear clear coming to 234b and 234c they are simply coming and saying do one thing compute 234b as per revised compute 234b as per original minus both that is your additional interest same for 234c what would have you paid as 234c earlier minus what you are going to pay now will be your additional Interest. So you will have three components: two thirty four A, two thirty four B, two thirty four C. Add all the three. That will become your additional interest multiplied by one twenty five or one fifty. Read. Interest under section two thirty four A computed on tax as per updated return up to the due date of filing of updated return. When it comes to two thirty four B, it is computed on tax as per updated return up to the due date of filing updated return. And interest under two thirty four C will be computed on tax as per updated return. Add. Late filing fees also because you forgot to file a return itself. You forgot to file a return itself. In these all scenarios, you never had a 234B. You never had a 234C because you never filed a return. Because you never filed a return. So what they are simply coming and saying: start 234A from the due date of original return till the due date of updated return. Compute 234B from 1st April of the original return till date of filing of updated return and compute 234C from full previous year for the previous year. 234C is only on the Previous year, add your late filing fees because you forgot to file the late filing fees. Also, whether it is five thousand rupees or one thousand rupees, you take care. Whether it is five thousand or one thousand, you take care, and that will become your additional interest. That will become your additional interest. Clear, clear. Same question.
Example number one. Same question. Example number one. You have filed no return earlier. You have filed no return earlier. Now you are showing your total income is 25 lakhs. 25 lakhs or 25 lakh 50 thousand now. 25 lakh 50 thousand. Because it is under new regime. It is under new regime. Now you have never paid any tax and you are going to discharge the whole of the tax on 31st December 2024. Correct? Huh? You are going to discharge the whole thing on 31st December 2024. They are asking you to compute the interest. What will you do? You will say, boss, how much is my tax payable? 5,22,600. On this 5,22,600, I have not paid any rupee, which means everything is payable. So, I will calculate interest at the rate of 1% from what to what? You are salaried guy, non-audit case, which means 31st July. 31st July. So, you will start from August 23 to December 24. Clear. How many months? August, September, October, November, December. 5 months plus 12, 17 months. So, it is 522,600 into 1% into 17 months number. Triple eight four two. So two thirty four A will become triple A. Uh, triple eight four two. Coming to two thirty four B, what is going to happen? Have you discharged any advance tax? No. Which means you need to pay interest from first April of twenty twenty three. From the start of your assessment year, from the start of your assessment year, so 5,22,600 into 1% into April 23 to December 24, 20, how many months? April, May, June, July, add 4 more months, add 4 more months, 17 plus 4 will become 21 months. So 5,22,600 into 1% into 21 months, 1,9,000. 746 clear this is your 234 b what is left 234 c that will apply during the previous year you need to do four installments yes or no you need to do four installments 15th june 15th 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 uh, 15 june how much you have to discharge 15% number is 5,22,600 into 15%. 78. 3? 19. Uh? 9,0. Then 45%. 2,35,1,7. 2,35,1,1,7. 1,7,0. 75%. 3,35,1,7. 1, Last one is... 600. This is what you need to discharge in the form of advanced tax. You forgot to discharge everything as advanced tax. So, therefore, you will be levied interest at the rate of 1% for 3 months. So, 3%, 3%, 3%, 1%. For those who have already started calculating, you have to round down 78,300, 2,35,100. 3,91,900, Now multiply and give me the answers. This is 2,3,49,7053,11757,522,6. Total. 26,3,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,
125 percent numbers Two eight one, two one zero. So totally you will pay two components. One will be that five lakh twenty two six hundred into one twenty five percent, which is six lakh fifty three two fifty plus two lakh eighty one two hundred and ten. So total you will have to pay what? Add six lakh fifty three two fifty. Nine lakh four. Six three. Hmm. Add an additional late file increase of five thousand into one twenty five percent. Nine lakh forty thousand seven hundred and ten. Yes. So for an income of twenty five lakh rupees, you are now ending up paying nine lakh forty thousand seven hundred and ten. How much is the division? Check. Nine forty seven ten divided by twenty five lakhs fifty thousand. Nine four zero seven one zero divided by twenty five fifty. Twenty five lakh fifty thousand. Almost paying around thirty seven percent. Whereas you should have only paid how much? Five lakh twenty two six hundred. Should have only paid five lakh twenty two six hundred. Divide this and tell me twenty point five percent. A twenty point five percent has suddenly jumped up and become thirty seven percent. Okay, this is how worst status. This is how worst status. Any doubts now? No. This is how the provision reads. Basically, what they are coming and saying: if you don't file your return, if you don't file your return, take whatever is a tax payable on your new return. Take whatever is the tax payable on your updated return. Reduce any taxes which are already showing as advance tax or TDS, if at all there is there. Ninety nine percent it won't be. Ninety nine percent it won't be. Add any kind of two thirty four A interest from from the due date of return filing till updated return. Two thirty four B from first April of AY till the updated return. Two thirty four C from Only previous year, from only previous year, add late filing fee. All that together, you will levy 125 or 130, uh, 150 percent. ये तो 130 नहीं ना चलते रहेगा. 25, 125 percent और 150 percent. Clear? Yes. Coming to the next leg, where we have filed a return, where we have filed a return. They are basically coming and saying, do what was compute the interest as is, assuming the new return was the actual return. Assuming the new return was the actual return, whatever you did not pay. Whatever you did not pay. So what they are coming and saying, boss, compute the 234A from the original return till the due date of filing the belated return. If at all you filed a return late, let me clarify. If at all you filed your original return on time, if you filed your original return on time, this will not apply. This will not apply. Even if you are going to pay extra tax, it's not a problem. Even if you are going to pay extra tax, it's not a problem because at the end of the day, your obligation was to file the return on time. Did you file a return? In that case, you will not be levied 234A. This is a scenario only in case where you have failed your return, uh, failed to file your original return also properly. Failed to file your original return also properly. So they are coming and saying, boss, assuming you filed your return late, assuming you filed your return late, what 234A would have applied on the actual income? Then, assuming you had filed your return late, what would have happened on 234B? What would have happened on 234C? Reduce whatever you paid earlier as 234A, 234B, 234C, and late filing fee, and late filing fee. See, minus any kind of interest or late filing fee already paid. This will become your additional interest. This will become your additional interest. Clear? Yes. See this question. Your example number two. Your total income is twenty five lakh fifty thousand. Fully salaries as per new regime. Because it is salaries, it is assumed that everything would have been deducted in the form of TDS. Assuming everything would have been deducted in the form of TDS, advance tax would not come. Advance tax will no come. But what happened? Fifteen lakh twenty thousand is what you disclosed, which means your TDS was only on fifteen lakh twenty thousand. So what happened? Your two lakh one thousand two forty is your TDS. Is your TDS, yes or no? This three lakh twenty one thousand you should have discharged by way of advance tax. Did you discharge? No. Which means 
234 b will apply which means 234 b will apply assuming you filed a return on time will 234 a apply no now in this case what you need to do you need to first compute 234 c you need to first compute 234 c in the original return would you have paid 234 c would you have paid 234 c no because original return 15 lakh fully was in the form of tds fully was in the form of tds but now you are in updated return now you are in updated return what is your new tax what is your new tax 5 lakh 22 600 so now you will compute on new tax so 15 june 15 september 15 december 15 march you will compute the installments based on 3 lakh 21 above amount is already deducted in the form of TDS which means advanced tax ka only the balance 3 lakh 21 is to be paid 3 lakh 21 into 15 percent 48 then 144 612 then 241 0 to 0 then 321 360 did you pay any advance tax no so therefore nothing to be reduced so this will become 48 200 144 600 2 lakh 41 triple 0 3 lakh 21 300 into 3 percent into 3 percent into 3 percent into 1 percent give me the final number final number final number final number put them all in my m plus put them all in m plus Two five zero. See if it's matching. Hey, a pretty raw. Hey, Seri Udo, Seri Udo, the lava kaga. Three two one three. Ah, two. Sixteen thousand two hundred and twenty-seven is your new two thirty-four C. Is your new two thirty-four C? Have you discharged any two thirty-four C earlier? Have you discharged any new old two thirty-four C earlier? No. So therefore, your additional two thirty-four C is sixteen two hundred and twenty-seven. Yes or no? Now come to two thirty-four B. Come to two thirty-four B. Earlier, your income was fifteen lakh fifty thousand. Fully was discharged by way of TDS, which means you paid no advance tax. Was 234B applicable that time? Was 234B applicable that time? No, everything discharged. So therefore, 234B you wouldn't have paid. Now you have a 234B on 321,360. Yes or no? This is what you have not paid. This is what you have not paid. Zero advance tax paid. So therefore, it will be levied at the rate of 1% into from, from, from April 23 to 31st March. I told you this is on the last day. So 31st March 26. How many months? Check. 36 months, 3 years. So therefore, 3, 2, 1, 3, 100 into 1% 1 into 36. 1 lakh 15 668 okay 1 lakh 15668 did you pay any advance uh, 234 b earlier did you pay any 234 b earlier therefore additional 234 b is one a additional 234 b is 115668 did you file a return on time yes did you pay 234 a earlier no will you pay 234 a right now no, because return filed on time, return filed on time. Do you have a late filing fee? No, no. Therefore, your additional interest is 16227 plus 115668. Number is 131895. You have to pay interest at the rate of 150%. Number 19. One nine seven eight hundred and forty three. This will be added to your actual tax number. Double eight zero. Zero. 
सिक्स लैख सेवेंटी नाइन थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड एटी इज योर एडिशनल टैक्स एंड इंटरेस्ट इज योर एडिशनल टैक्स एंड इंटरेस्ट क्लियर दिस इज हाउ द कंपिटिशन वर्क एनी डाउट्स नो दिस इज द होल मैकेजम द मैकेजम सिंपली कम्स एंड सीज इफ यू आर फाइलिंग एन अपडेटेड रिटर्न इफ यू आर फाइलिंग एन अपडेटेड रिटर्न यू कैन फाइल द अपडेटेड रिटर्न बिफोर बिफोर ट्वेंटी फोर मंथ्स फ्रॉम द एंड ऑफ योर असेसमेंट इयर ट्वेंटी फोर मंथ्स फ्रॉम द एंड ऑफ योर assessment here if you are going to file an updated return please do ensure that you only favor the government meaning you should have an extra tax you should have an extra tax if there is a lower income not allowed if there is a lower loss not allowed if the loss becomes income allowed all these are the scenarios there they are coming and saying boss whatever is your additional tax whatever is your additional tax and additional interest you will have to pay 125% up to 31st march 2025 and after 31st march 2025 you will have to pay one 50% how do you compute check where you have filed a return or not filed a return if you have filed a return if you have filed a return whatever is the tax you earlier paid minus the tax which you are going to pay will become the additional tax coming to interest whatever is the interest you are going to pay now minus the interest you have already paid will become the additional interest in this scenario if you have filed your original return on time 234a will not apply 234f will not apply but if you have not filed your original return on time you will assume 234a from the new return tax from the new return tax assuming you have not filed a return at all assuming you have not filed a return at all in that scenario what you will do is you will take the tax as per the new return directly because tax as per old return is zero tax as per old return is zero and then you will take tax as per the uh, sorry interest as per the new returns 234a as per new return Late filing fee as per new return reduce nothing, so therefore that will become your total additional tax and interest on which you will pay one twenty five or one fifty percent. Clear? Yes. Yes. Great. I don't think I have put a question in the question bank for this, right? Okay. Let me check if there is one question in my question bank. As such, I say I never gave any questions, so I don't have anything to discuss. This question most likely will come as MCQ. Okay, it will not come as a full-fledged question. Very unlikely for it to come as full-fledged question because too much to solve. In the question, a porter they will have to give you eight marks at least, and I say I will not do that. Okay, so they will most likely ask it as an MCQ question where they will come and say, what is the due date for filing updated return? Can you file an updated return? What can you file an updated return for? If you file it on this date, what is your extra tax? One twenty-five or one fifty? All those mocky mocky questions only will come from exam perspective. But I will not take a chance. Let me see if I have a question. I most likely have a question, but I don't remember where it is. Uh, this is AMT. This is ah, uh, inger uh, ko. Two thirty-four F. Yeah, perfect. See the question. Extra question prepared from my side just to uh, for, uh, just for a flavor. Okay. Question comes and says you are Mr. Krish. You are Mr. Krish, thirty-four years, resident individual. You know how my books are, no? We will have all weird weird names only inside. Yes, you are Mr. Krish with a resident individual. Who has not submitted his return of income for the assessment year, twenty one, twenty two? What is the due date for filing updated return? Updated return due date. Thirty first March, twenty twenty four. I am asking updated return. Asking updated return thirty first March twenty four assessment year twenty one twenty two two more years will be added so thirty first March twenty twenty four IT department has not initiated a proceeding so far on this case. Adana na dam he intends to submit the return of income for the assessment year twenty one twenty two under one thirty nine eight a what is one thirty nine eight a updated return on twenty ninth November twenty twenty two useless guy useless guy. He could have filed and revised return, but he chose to file. The following information is available. The following information is available. The total income for assessment year twenty one twenty two is given as forty five lakh. 
15,000. Advance tax paid on 4th November 2021 is given as 3 lakh rupees. TDS TCS available in 26 years is given as 70,000. Although he did not file a return, he still has some tax payables. He still has some taxes. He has already discharged some taxes. Compute the tax to be paid under 140B before furnishing the updated return on 29th November 2022. Assume that the due date for furnishing return was 31st. He corrected the what is his due date for filing revised return? 31st December 21. Correct only no. No, no. Sorry, my mistake. Assume that the due date for furnishing is 31st July 21. 31st July 21 was your original return. You could have filed and revised return up to 31st December 21. You are filing it on 31st. Sorry, 29th November 2022. You are filing an update return. Correct only ma. Yes, your interest will be at the rate of 125%. Let's compute. Let's compute. They are saying you have not filed a return at all. You have not filed a return at all. So, which means you need to first understand what will happen for your total tax. What will happen for your total tax? As per the new tax updated return, you are having a total income of 45,15,000. You have to pay tax on this compute tax. Forty five lakh fifteen thousand. Compute the tax. Ignore one and five BAC. I will not play the same game again, man. Never possible that I'll let you win. Twelve lakh thirteen thousand six eighty. Twelve lakh thirteen thousand. Those kind of questions will only come when you forget things. Okay, when I correctly know you'll make a mistake, that is when I'll cook it up. Okay, so your total tax payable is 12 lakh 13,680. This is what you're going to pay as per the new tax updated return. As per the new tax updated return. And the question somewhere comes and says you paid an advance tax on 4th November 2020. You're paying an advance tax on 4th November 2021. Question to you, first of all, is it advance tax? Is it advanced tax? No, it is a self-assessment tax. It is not an advanced tax, it is a self-assessment tax. Next one, TDS TCS available as per the 26 years is 70,000. What is the extra tax he has to pay now? Remove your advanced tax. Remove your TDS. 3,70,000. This is what he has not paid till date. This is what he has not paid till date. When will he discharge this? 29 November 2022. Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Let's start with the ULTA. We are in 234 C. We are in 234 C. Starting from 15th June, 15th September, 15th December, 15th March. Understand and tell me what is your tax payable. For the purpose of 234C, what is your tax payable? Twelve lakh? No. What is your tax for the purpose of 234C? Eleven lakh? Six eighty. How did you get it? Very good. Please understand, people. TDS is the only thing which would have happened in the previous year. Advanced tax is paid when? Assessment year, which means it will not be considered for 234C. So the only thing which will be considered for 234C is your TDS. So 12 lakh 13 minus 70,000. 11 lakh 43, 680. Discharges in four quarters. Give me the numbers. 
सॉरी वन लाख सेवेंटी फाइव वन सेवन फाइव डबल डबल फाइव टू फाइव वन फोर सिक्स फाइव सिक्स एट लाख फिफ्टी फिफ्टी सेवन सेवन सिक्सटी लास्ट वन लेवन फोर्टी थ्री थ्री सिक्सटी दीज आर योर टू थर्टी फोर सी आइटम्स these are your 234c items have you discharged anything as advance tax no so therefore this will become 1715514615467011437111436001143% into 3% Three percent into three percent into one percent. So your total 234C is 57,750. Have you discharged any 234C earlier? Have you discharged any 234C earlier? No. So therefore, this becomes your additional 234C. Clear? Can we go to 234B? Yes. Coming to 234B. Coming to 234B. Please understand. No, what is happening? What is happening? You have paid something called as advance tax on November. So which means up to November you will have a different tax. After November you will have a different tax yes or no yes or no so up to november what is the tax liability 11 lakh 43680 at the rate of 1% from 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 from, from. april may june july august september october november 8 months Why do I feel this advance tax number is wrong? Give me one second. Eight lakh forty-three six hundred is given. How much did you get as two thirty-four C? I think this advance tax was paid uh, on 29th March. I think this is a mistake from my side. Uh, no, 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 not sorry. This is correct. Where is advance tax number? This is the uh, 4th March 21. Sorry. Hey, I know. 16th March 21. Let's assume it as 16th March 21 because then only 234C will come right. Then only 234C will come right, but the balance amount is paid as advance tax number. So therefore, it is uh, advance tax will be reduced from your 234B. Advance tax will be reduced from your 234B. So this will become 8 lakh 43,680 into 1% into into. Now you'll directly start from. Nada. Ha. Huh, okay. I'm computing the number of months. Start from April of. Assessment year, so April twenty one two 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 twenty nine November twenty twenty two. How many months? Check. Twenty months. Twenty months. So what is happening? Eighty four eight lakh forty three six hundred. Into one percent into twenty. One lakh sixty-eight seven hundred and twenty. 
ஆ சரி செவன் தேர்ட்டி சிக்ஸ் செவன் டுவெண்ட்டி வாட் எவர் ஒன் லேக் சிக்ஸ்டி எயிட் செவன் ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி லீவ்ஸ் யூ வித் த லாஸ்ட் ஐட்டம் கால்ட் அஸ் டூ தேர்ட்டி ஃபோர் ஏ லீவ்ஸ் யூ த லாஸ்ட் ஐட்டம் கால்ட் அஸ் டூ தேர்ட்டி ஃபோர் ஏ வாட் இஸ் த டாக்ஸ் லைப்ரரி ஃபார் டூ தேர்ட்டி ஃபோர் ஏ சேம் எயிட் லேக் ஃபார்ட்டி த்ரீ சிக்ஸ் ஹண்ட்ரட் இன்டூ ஒன் பர்சன்ட் நவ் யூ வில் டூ இட் ஃப்ரம் வாட் யூ வில் டூ இட் ஃப்ரம் த டியூ டேட் ஆஃப் ரிட்டர்ன் டியூ டேட் ஆஃப் ரிட்டர்ன் வாஸ் தேர்ட்டி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஜூலை ஸோ இல் ஹஸ் டூ ஸ்டார்ட் ஃப்ரம் ஆகஸ்ட் ஆகஸ்ட் செப்டம்பர் அக்டோபர் நவம்பர் டிசம்பர் ஃபைவ் மந்த்ஸ் இன் டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் Five months in 21, 11 months in 22. So therefore, 16 months. 34, huh? Ah? 39, what are you? Sorry. Month 34? 976. 976. So what will happen? Your total in tax liability was 8,43,680. Your 234C is 54,752. 234b is 1,68,720, 234a is 1,39,4, 1,34,976, since you did not file a return, you will be levied something called as late filing fee of 5,000 rupees, total it up, 12,10,126 into 125%. Six five eight. Since it's the final tax liability, you will round it off to the nearest six sixty fifteen lakh twelve thousand six hundred and sixty. Clear? Yes. Clear? Yes. This is how your questions will come. Unlikely to come in exam because they have not given one illustration also. They have not given one illustration also in your material. Most likely will come as an MCQ question. So tackle it around that. Okay? Yeah. Great. This marks the end of your income tax. This marks the end of your income tax. We are pretty much done with all the subjects. Sir. We're pretty much done with the subject. What we are going to answer now is called as comprehensive questions. What basically is comprehensive questions is that I have accumulated all those questions which are there in your study material and some past exam questions and some past exam questions and I have put it here so that you can practice your 8 mark or 12 mark question. You can practice your 8 mark or 12 mark which is your compulsory questions. Okay. Your compulsory questions can be practiced because at the end of the day it is not about you solving each chapter. It is not about you solving each chapter. It's about you looking at a word and understanding which chapters are involved. Okay. So you need to have an overall bird's eye view of every chapter the moment we use one word. The moment we use one word. So we'll do the questions around it. I will pick a word and I will ask you which chapter and all it relates to. You need to tell me which and all chapter it comes from. Okay. Can we do that? Yes. As we progress, maybe the last question or second last question, given the time, we will solve the whole question also to understand the format. To understand the format, balance questions, we will just discuss. Okay. This PDF might not be available with you. I will share the PDF after the class gets over. All right. Can we? Yes. Question number one. Mr. Charlie is an American national. Mr. Charlie is an American national. Got married to Mr. Radhe of India. Oh, sorry. Miss Charlie. Miss Charlie is an American national. Got married to Mr. Radhe of India in USA on 2nd March 2022. She got married to Mr. Radhe of India on 2nd March 2022 and came to India for the first time on 16th March 2022. Your previous year, previous, previous year. came in previous previous year came in previous previous year she came on 16th march she left for usa again on 19th september 2020 to return to india again on 27th march 2020 your previous year, previous year. while in india she purchased a showroom in mumbai on 30th april 2022 your previous year yes which was leased out to a company for a rent of 25000 per month on 1st may 2020 she had taken a loan from a bank for the purchase of the showroom on which the bank had charged an interest of 97,000. Which head of income are we in? HP. 
Bank charged an interest of 97,500 up to 31st March 2023. She received the following cash gifts from her relatives and friends during the 1st April 22 to 31st March 23. From the parents of husband. Exempt or taxable? Exempt. From married sister of husband. I don't know. You tell me exempt or exempt. From two very close friends of her husband, 1,51 and 21,000. How much taxable? 1,51 or 21 now? Hey, that one is less than 50,000. Everything taxable? Very okay. Determine a residential status and compute the total income chargeable to tax along with the tax liability for the assessment year 23-24. Would a residential status undergo a change assuming that she is a person of Indian origin and her total income from Indian sources is 18 lakh rupees and she is not liable to tax in US. Let's start the first question first. Let's understand the first question. What she is coming and what they are coming and saying is determine the residential status of Charlie or Adeva. Charlie. You are Charlie, American national outside India, coming to India. Have you come for a visit, not for a visit? It doesn't matter, you are a foreign national. Check for the number of days. Help me. Help me. What is the start date? 1st April 16th March. 1st April 22 to, to what date? 19th September 22 then she again returned on 27th March 23 to 31st March 23 add 176. Here is where you need to be X. Correct? Huh? 176. Huh? This is where you need to be extremely cautious for those people who made a mistake and started the date from 16th March. You might have ended up telling her as a resident. You might have ended up telling her as a resident because 182 would have crossed. You have to start from 1st April of the current year. 1st April of the current year, she is 176 days. She is 176 days in the current year. Left side, right side. Left side, come to the left side, you are a foreign national. First chart, second chart, third chart. Third chart, other chart. In your other chart, they come and say you should stay in India for 60 days in the current year and 365 in the last four years. Current year you stayed for 172. Last four you stayed for 16 days. You came on 16th March for the first time, so you came for 16 days. Condition satisfied, not satisfied. Therefore, you are non-resident. With you being a non-resident, now let's understand what are the incomes which are taxable. First income is given as showroom income. First income is given as showroom income. Taxable under the head HP. So, therefore, you will create a HP chart. What is the format? Municipal value given, not given. Not given. Fair value. Standard value. Directly given. Actual value. This becomes your NAV. Municipal tax is also not given. Municipal tax is also not given. So, 25,000 into 10, 12 will give you. Smart. 25,000 into 11 will give you. 2 lakh. 75,000 is your NAV. Reduce. 30 percent number is. 1. One ninety two five hundred. Sorry, ma. Reduce interest on loan given in the question was. Will you register to thirty thousand? Why? Let out property. Ninety seven five hundred will be reduced. Therefore, your HP income is ninety five thousand. Is your HP income come to IFOS income? This is exempt from tax. Exempt from tax. Fully taxable. So, therefore, your IFOS income is 1,72,000. Your gross total income is 
टू लैख सिक्सटी सेवन थाउजेंड योर टोटल इनकम इज ऑल्सो टू लैख सिक्सटी सेवन थाउजेंड योर टैक्स लाइबिलिटी इज जीरो नो यू आर ए नॉन रेसिडेंट You are a non-resident. No rebate for you. Two lakh sixty-seven thousand minus two lakh fifty thousand will give you how much? Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand into five percent will give you eight fifty. Ah, eight fifty plus four percent says. Double eight four. Therefore, it becomes eight hundred and for a level. Ka correct panno. Aadhi kapro didi na poch. No problem. It's okay. Okay. Realize your mistakes and that's why it worked out. Okay. So your total tax liability will become eight hundred and eighty because she is a non-resident. Look at question number two. Would your residential status undergo any change? Assuming that she is a person of Indian origin. Now she is a person of Indian origin coming to India for visit. Coming to India for a visit, yes or no? Yes or no? If she is coming for a visit, uh, total income is given as eighteen lakhs. She is not liable to tax in USA. Will you satisfy the one twenty condition? No, because three sixty five still not satisfied. But you will satisfy deemed residency. You will satisfy deemed residency because total income is more than fifteen lakhs. You are not liable to tax in USA. You are not liable to tax in USA. Therefore, you are a deemed. Resident. In case you are a deemed resident, your total income becomes same. Your total income is same, but your tax becomes zero. Your tax becomes zero because you now get rebate. basically they telling to ignore the first question they telling you to ignore the first question they are only asking you to look at the second question useless question you are asking you to look at the second question second question comes and says your indian income is 18 lakh rupees so 18 lakhs ke mala tax varo they are not asking you to compute the tax they are just asking you to change the answer you will say yes the answer will change because you are a deemed residents and therefore a r n o r in india and therefore a r n o r in india clear see your tax will become 880 If she is a person of Indian origin and total income exceeds 15 lakh rupees, the condition of stay in India exceeding 120 days is not satisfied. Since her stay is less than that, her residential status would continue to be the same, non-resident. Further, she is not a citizen of India. Ah. She is a person of India. Indian. Deemed residency provisions only apply to Indian citizens. They only apply to Indian citizens, which means you continue to be a. Would your answer change? No, your answer will still not undergo a change because it is a Indian. Now she is still a non-Indian citizen, but a person of Indian origin. Person of Indian origin does not get captured into deemed residency. I read it as uh, Indian citizen. Na parchta. I I I read it as person of Indian citizen. Adana la mispanta. Sorry, okay, no problem. my mistake can we go to question number 2 question number 2 your doctor niranjana a resident individual age 60 years running a clinic running a clinic meaning you are okay. are you running business or profession you running a profession her income and expenditure for the year ended 31st march 23 is given to you i'll give you a tip i'll give you a tip when a question like this comes when a question like this comes always start from the right side always start from the right side okay always start from the right side because right side will have the revenue right side will have the revenue it's easier for you to tackle your revenue then go into your expenses because you need to check for something called as presumptive you need to check for something called as presumptive you are a professional person therefore your presumptive income will be applicable if your total income is more than your gross receipts is more than 50 lakhs come from the right side your consultation income is given as 58 lakhs will you offer presumptive will you offer presumptive no with this itself you are now sorted that you only have to do one income called as 
PGVP. PGVP. Now you only have to do one income called as PGVP. You don't have to do presumptive, which means you are safe on that. Okay. Start from the right side and let's understand to split our incomes. If you recall your golden rules, I would have come and said step number three is to determine whether the income is taxable or not. And step number four is to classify into heads. So let's classify into heads starting from right side. Starting from right side. First, consultation income under income tax refund, principal amount is 5000, interest amount is 450. Interest will go under IFOS, principal will become not taxable, principal will become not taxable because this is receipt, dividend income from UTI, winnings from game show on TV, net of TDS of 15,000 which means the 35,000 is after TDS, your income is under the head. Rent, you don't know, check, you don't know, check, come to the left side, come to the left side, medical consumed, staff salary, clinical consumables, rent paid, this is PGBP only, you cannot pay rent for IFHP, hey, how can you pay rent for IFHP, administrative expenses, Amount paid for scientific research association. Net profit. Come to the bottom. Rent paid includes 30,000 paid by check towards rent for residential house in Surat. 30,000 is by personal expense. At this point of time, you can just take a small pencil and highlight it, highlight it, where you will come and say this is to be disallowed, put as point number one, so that you know point number one has to be answered, okay. Next, point number two, clinical equipments are given to you, clinical equipments are given to you, opening WDV is 5 lakhs, acquired by check is 2 lakhs, when did you acquire? After Gandhi Jayanti, before Gandhi Jayanti, 50%, full percent, 50%, depreciation rate. Plant and machinery 15%. Plant and machinery 15% for opening WDV 7.5 for less than 180 days. Rent received, uh, see, rent received relates to property situated at Surat. Gross annual value is given as 27,000. Municipal tax is given as 2,000. Paid in December and included in administrative charges. This is your HP. Go to administrative charges. Point number 3. What will you do? Disallow. How much? 2000. Why? Pertains to another head of income. Pertains to another head of income. One checkpoint for you. Be careful. Rent paid pertains to residential house in Surat. And you also have a property in Surat. Meaning he has an own property but still choosing to live in rented property. Still choosing to live in rented property. The reason I am telling you is because any kind of rent paid will be eligible for deduction under 80 double G. 80 double G. But I would have clarified to you that time itself 80 double G Puerto Rico never allowed as deduction. This is the reason. Never allowed as deduction. This is the reason the prov provisions come and say that boss in the same place where you have a property you cannot have a rent. Same place you have a property, you cannot have a rent. If you are paying rent in the same location where you have a property, no 80 double G for you. So therefore, 80 double G not allowed for you. Clear? Yes. This is one side note you have to write. This is one side note you will have to write. Next one. She received salary of 7,500 per month from full care hospital, which has not been included in the consultation and medical expenses. Heading of income. Salaries. Dr. Niranjana. Availed a loan of 5,50,000 from bank for a higher education. Sorry. Dr. Niranjana availed a loan of 5,50,000 from a bank for higher education of her daughter. Section number. She paid principal of 1 lakh and interest of 55,000. Only? Can you claim 5,50,000 under ATC? Why? Very good. What you can claim under ATC is tuition fees, not the loan amount. Not the loan amount. You can claim tuition fees. So, therefore, you will only claim a deduction of 55,000 under. 
she paid 1 lakh as tuition fees not in the nature of development fees donation to the university for full time education of her daughter an amount of 28000 has also been paid by check on 27 march for her medical insurance premium you can claim a deduction of full 27000 From the above, you are required to compute the total income of Niranjana under the section, uh, under the regular provisions of the act, assuming she is not opting for 115 BSC. Straightforward question. Straightforward question. Yes. In this scenario, the format works in this way. The format works in this way. You need to make a decision as to whether you need to have three columns or four or two columns. You need to make a decision whether you need to have three columns or two columns. I generally tell people that, boss, if you have multiple heads of income, make it three column. Helena, make it two column. What do I mean by three column? Start from particulars. 1, 2, 3, 3 amount columns. Why the 3 amount columns? Last column will be the final answers. Last column will be the final answers from each head of income. From each head of income. Middle one will be the answer for that head of income. Answer for that head of income. First column is for your working notes. First column is for your working notes. Clear? Yes. Let's do this. Let's do this. What are we doing? We are into step number 3. We have classified into heads. We have classified into heads. Step number four is to identify the heads of income and give the deductions. Starting from the first head of income called as salaries. Starting from the first head of income called as salaries. Somewhere in the bottom they have come and said that you have a salary of 7,500 per month. 7,500 per month into 12 months. Do you have any deductions to claim from this? No. So therefore you directly put it in second column. I will come to that. I will come to that. Will you have to put any deductions? Expe in the salary, in the reduce panna ma. Illa. So, directly put it in second column. 7,500 into 12 will become 90,000. Is there anything else in salaries given? Is there anything else in salaries given? So, this becomes your gross salary. From this, you will reduce something called as deduction under section 16, standard deduction of 50,000 rupees. Anything else pending in salaries? No, put an underline on the right column, it becomes 40,000. This is how you work the format. This is how you work the format. Clear? Yes. Next uh, heading is called as HP. In HP, you have something called as do you have a municipal value? No. Fair value? No. Any uh, standard value? No. Directly given is gross annual value. So, GAV, you have to put a note here saying rent received assumed as GAV. What are you doing? You are making an assumption that your rent received is more than these items. You are making an assumption that the rent received is more than these items. So, you will put a note around it. Okay. What is the amount? 27,000. Do you have any deductions from it? No. So, therefore, put it on the right column. Do you have any other item in this? You have a municipal tax. So, you will reduce municipal tax. Amount was uh, point number 3. How much is it? 2000 and you have paid it in December which means in the current previous year itself therefore it is allowed as a deduction. So, what will you do? Less 2000 rupees because it is paid. Amount is 25000 rupees less standard deduction at the rate of 30 percent. Number is 7500. Do you have any interest on loan in the question? Do you have any interest on loan? No, interest on loan. Therefore, you will directly leave it just like that. 17,500 completed with your HP. Come to your next biggest head of income called as PGB. Starting point is net profit. Starting point is net profit. In your net profit, first item is 4,40,400. 4,40,400. Four lakh Four lakh In this, I have to do split. I have to do split. First split is all disallowances and additions. All disallowances and addition. Start from the left side. Start from the left side. Are you going to disallow something? Rent paid lay, you are going to disallow some amount of 30,000. So, here you will put what? Point number A. Rent paid personal in nature. Personal in nature, 30,000 rupees. If you write just this half a mark only. If you write only this much, you will only get half a mark, you need to explain the provision. You need to explain the provision. You need to say rent paid within brackets, 
since the rent is paid for personal uh, since the rent is paid for a residential property this is personal in nature and therefore to be disallowed under pgbp since it is debited to the pnl account this is to be added back you need to explain them what the treatment is you need to explain them what the treatment is why did you add it you added it because it is there already if it was not there already would you have added it that is why you need to explain the treatment to them when we do the last question we will discuss it together okay so rent paid to be disallowed the moment I am done with this, I will put a tick mark on this so that I am done with it. I end up. So I am done with this, so I am going to put a tick mark. Coming to the administrative expenses, you have 2000 rupees to be disallowed. So you will say municipal tax paid for residential house property. What is the content you will write here? Since the municipal tax pertains to the house property which is taxed under income from house property, the same has to be disallowed under the head PGBP. Since it is already a part of net profit, the same has to be added back. Clear? Yes? Two disallowances over for you. Next item. Will you disallow amount paid to scientific research? Already claimed nothing to be done but you have to put a note. So what will you do? Point number C. Scientific research expenses put a dash put a dash below you will say as per the provisions of income tax act any amount paid for scientific research is 100 percent allowed as a deduction since the expense is already claimed as a deduction no further adjustment is required this amount is already claimed as a deduction no further adjustment is required in the english clear yes next point number e anything on the left side no come to the bottom come to the notes rent paid 30,000 already disallowed next is depreciation to be claimed so ignore Rent to paid, claimed, salary, done. Next is 80E, the balance is 80C, then it is 80D. Nothing else to be added, correct? Huh? Done. So what will you do? Total this up, put it in the middle column. 32,000. 32,000. Come to the less deduction slash allowances. Now you will start from right side. Start from the right side here i would have noticed i would have said what first income is dividend income of 10500 winnings income of 50000 rent income of 27000 so i'm going to say what income taxable under other heads income taxable under other heads first one is dividend then it is winnings then it is house property rent Yes, dividends was, uh, winnings was 50,000, house property rent was 27,000, 10,500. We have one more item, income tax refund. How much will I reduce? How much will I reduce? How much will I reduce? I will reduce the full 5,450. I will reduce the full 5,450. Understand people, it's a different head of income it's a different head of income first to remove the full 5450 from here go there and then exempt 5000 and tax the balance 450 if you reduce only 450 from here what will happen you will assume that the 5000 has become taxable yes or no so since it is classified to another head first to remove the full income and then go there and then check for the taxability go there and check for the taxability that is what we're doing step number three is classifying the heads the moment you classified 5450 as pgb uh, as other sources remove the full item out remove the full item out so you remove the full 5450 then you go to step number 4 in ifos and you come and say only taxable amount is 450 clear that is why this is also wrong because what you have credited to pnl 35 which means how much income have you shown in pgbp 35 how much can you reduce from pgbp 35 how much should you tax in other sources 50 Purida. Yes, be careful on those items. Be careful on those items. With this, we are done with the right side. Coming to the notes. In the notes, we have one item called as depreciation. We have an item called as depreciation. Let's compute the depreciation. 5 lakhs into 15 percent, 2 lakhs into 7.5 percent. 5 lakhs into 15 percent will give you 22,500. Uh, 2 lakh 25,000. 5 lakh. 5 lakh into 15 percent number is 
total is 90,000. So, you will come and say depreciation as per IT Act, you will have to put a working note on this. You have to put a working note on this. Somewhere in the bottom, you will have to put a working note. Number is 90,000. Is there anything item left? No other items left. Total this up. 10,500 plus 35,000 is 45,000. Uh, 45, 950. Sorry, da. 167,950. Are you going to add this or reduce this? Put it in brackets. Put it in brackets. Now you will clearly understand 4,4400 is your income. Add 32,000. Reduce 167,950. Give me the number. Four. Three zero four four five zero. Done with one more head of income. Yes. Now coming to the last head of income called as IFOS. In IFOS, you have first item called as dividends. Number is Malalende ten thousand five hundred. Then you have income tax refund. You will only tax four fifty. You will come and say a note here saying since. 5000 is the principal component. This is merely a receipt and therefore only taxable amount is 450. Winnings, you will come and tax 50,000. Put a note here coming and saying the amount mentioned in the question is the net amount. So the taxable amount will be the gross amount which is 50,000. Last item is, that's all. Huh? Do you have any more items? No. Total this up. 60. 950. With this, all your heads of income are done. Total your incomes 6950 plus 3,4450 plus 17,500 plus 40,000. 4,22,900. This is your GTI. From your GTI, you need to reduce 80 C. Check your questions. Tuition fees of 1 lakh rupees. ATD is 28,000 rupees. So, therefore, 1 lakh 28,000. Then ATE is 55,000. So, 1 lakh 28 plus 55. Huh? 1 lakh 83,000. Any other income? Do you have any interest incomes? Do you have any interest incomes? No. So, therefore, ATTTB will also not apply. So, therefore, your total chapter 6 is 1,83,000. If you give only this much, one mark cut for you. One mark cut for you because you need to write no deduction under section 80 GG since he has property in same location since he has a property in same location find out the total income 2 lakh 39 39 900 2 lakh 39 900 done yes since you're done with the question you'll double underline and close the answer and inform the examiner that boss i'm done with the question i'm done with the question give me pull marks okay this is how you need to attempt your question I am assuming, yeah, 2,39,900. Is the question asking for tax liability? From the above, compute the total income of Mr. Niranjana under the regular provisions of Income Tax Act. They have asked you for total income, compute the total income, close the answer there itself. Clear? This is how you need to do your answers. This is how you need to do your answers. Look at the adjustment, understand where and all it gets impacted. Understand where and all it gets impacted. Take a pencil, make a note. Very small note, people. Do not update, do not make it very visible. Do not make it very visible. If the examiner finds out in a question paper there are markings, he will debar you from the exam. Okay. So be extremely cautious on when you are making a markings. At the same time, do make markings also so that you understand properly. When do you make this markings? When you read the question first time. Never make the mistake of doing this markings during your 15 minutes. Because that 15 minutes is for you to do what? It's for you to understand which question to leave. 
it's for you to understand which question to leave. So never waste time on all these items. Never start answering your question. Look at all the questions. Ignore your compulsory question because you anyway have to answer. You anyway have to answer. In your DT and IDT, both the papers, two to six question. Check which question looks tough for you and which question you will not be able to answer and then you ignore those kind of questions. At the same time when you are reading it, please also understand which question is easy for you also. Please understand which question is easy for you also. That question is what you need to answer first. That question is what you need to answer first. Make it as beautiful as possible in the first question itself so that the examiner gets happy there itself and you are, even if you make some mistakes in the future, he will still give you full marks. Okay. First page itself, if you start, okay, start scribbling on the first page, next page he will not even go. He will not even go to the next page. First page itself, if he loses mood, you will also lose your exam. The paper after you also will lose the exam. Okay. Never become a reason for someone else's failure also. Can we go to the next one? Read the next one. Mr. Y carries on his own business. An analysis of his trading and profit and loss account for the year ended 31st March is given to you. They have given you trading p and account. The net profit is given to you as 11,20,000 PGBP. The following incomes were credited in the p and account, meaning this 11,20,000 already has it. Already has it. Dividend from UTI, 22,000. What will you do? What will you do? Reduce from PGBP, add to other sources. Both the adjustments. Interest on debentures. Reduce from PGBP, add in other sources. Winnings from horse races. Add to other sources. Yes. Next one. It was found that some stocks were omitted to be included in both the opening stock and closing stock, the value of which are given to you. Opening stock, they forgot to include 8,000. Closing stock, they forgot to include 12,000. Is this income tax or accounts? Accounts. In accounts, you forgot to include opening stock of 8,000. Will your profit increase or fall? Fall. In closing stock, you forgot to include 12,000. Will you profit increase or fall? Increase. So, you are going to reduce your stock by 8,000. Increase your stock by 12,000. Overall, there will be a profit of. What will you do? Add to PGBP amount is 4,000. Clear? Next. 1 lakh was debited in the profit and loss account being contribution to university approved and notified under 3513. What will you do? Put a note. Nothing, na? put a note. Salary includes 20,000 paid to his brother which is unreasonable to the extent of 2,500 rupees. Very good. Disallow. 2500. They say salary includes, meaning salary is already there. Advertisement expenses include 15 packets of dry fruits costing 1000 per packet presented to important customers. What to do? Disallow. Why? Allowed as deduction. Freebies to doctors are not allowed because that is treated illegal. This is a normal sample. This is a normal sampling expenses. Pure business expense can be fully claimed as a deduction. No issues on this. Total expenses on car was 78,000. The car was used both for business and personal purpose. Three-fourth of the car is given as business purpose. Meaning one-fourth is what you need to disallow. 78 into one-fourth is 19,500 to be added to PGBP, to be added to PGBP. Next one, miscellaneous expenses included 30,000 paid to A and Co. Goods transport operator in cash. Why? 30. On 31st March 23, for distribution of company's products to warehouse, you are allowed as a deduction because the payment is less than 35,000. What will you do? Put a note. Put a note, come and say that the payment is less than 35,000, therefore it is fully allowed as a depreciation which is debited in books is 55,000, depreciation allowed as per income tax act is 50,000. Add 5,000 difference. Drawings of 10,000. What is drawings or illa drawings? Are? Disallow. Why? Where is it given as debited to PNL? Hmm? 
எங்கே மாதிரி இருக்குது எங்கே இருக்குது very good the question somewhere hiddenly has come and clarified that this is a trading and pnl which means this is already debited this is already debited which means it needs to be disallowed why are you disallowing personal expense investment in nsc 15000 what will you do if you have made an assumption that the drawings is debited that means investment is also debited adha sonnalla be careful on what assumptions you are making okay if you are telling that this is a trading and payable account it means that the investment in nsc is also debited which means what you need to do you need to add this back and then claim under atc because it is not a business expense clear it's very important for you to understand in pgvp what to add and what to reduce understanding the logic is very important understand the logic is very important please be very careful on what you are doing clear yes compute the total income of mr y for the assessment year 23 24 assuming he is not opted to pay tax under 115 bsc straight forward question you can handle it yourself any doubts i am assuming they would have added back see they have added it back and they would put a note here since the drawings and investment in nsc has been given effect in the profit and loss account the same has to be added back for the purpose of this clear uh, uh uh yeah balamurgan has given you the following information for the year ended 31st march 23 income from textile business is given as negative 135000 meaning this is we are into set of chapter policy is to always start from losses this is your business loss income from house property hp loss lottery winnings income can you set off hp against this can you set off pgbp against this no. speculation business income 1 lakh rupees can you set off your business loss against speculative yes patya patya adha prachne the problem is only from speculative loss the problem is not from this loss which means it can be set off income by way of salary 60000 the moment you see salary income first to set off hp first to set off hp long term capital gains is given as 112 can you set off 112 business in business loss against 112 can you set off business loss against 112 yes capital loss has a restriction business loss has no restriction business loss can be set off against any income other than salaries still it's beneficial for the government no because the tax on that is only 10% but your loss you're setting off is 30% so it's a benefit for the government okay understand from the loss perspective people from loss perspective pgbp loss can be set off against any income other than salaries so which means it can also be set off against capital gains clear yes so what will happen 1 lakh 35 1 lakh has gone to business balance 35 has gone to capital gains so therefore capital gains amount is 35000 15000 of hp loss has been set off against your 60000 worth of 45000 is your salary uh, speculative is fully gone lottery winnings is 5 lakh rupees அவ்வளோதானே அவ்வளோதானே டோட்டல் இன்கம் லேக் எயிட்டி தௌசண்ட் லுக் அட் தௌசண்ட் லேக் எயிட்டி தௌசண்ட் கம்ப்யூட் டாக்ஸ் லைபிலிட்டி கோ அட் திஸ் இஸ் வின்னிங்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் சேலரி திஸ் இஸ் ஒன் ஒன் டூ ஆல்வேஸ் பாலமுருகன் பேர்ல யாரும் வருதான் compute the tax let's see if this time at least you get it right hey no discussions no discussions i want to see who gets it wrong make me happy get it wrong Hey, you have only one minute. You cannot sit like that, just like that. I want answers from everyone. 
everyone is writing exam this time no or you are come here to help your friends 1 lakh hello come on எழுதுருக்கு சரி ஓகே ஆன்சர் இஸ் ஒன் லேக் ஃபிஃப்டி சிக்ஸ் ஃபிஃப்டி சிக்ஸ் ரைட் எப்படி ஒன் ஃபிஃப்டி வாட் இஸ் ஆன்சர் One lakh fifty-six thousand is the right answer. Why? Very good. A resident individual having an unexhausted basic exemption limit can utilize your capital gains. Can utilize your capital gains. You are the child of the house. You are the child of the house. Can utilize your capital gains, which means salary will also go into basic exemption. Capital gains will also go into basic exemption. Left off is only winnings because it is your parents. When this is your parents, five lakhs into thirty percent is one lakh. Will you claim rebate? Why? That is basic exemption. Utilize twenty. After no. The only income taxable is winnings. No. If the only income taxable is winnings, five lakhs. Sorry. Add says of. Four percent number is six thousand. Therefore, it becomes one lakh fifty-six thousand. The question also comes and says, find out the advance tax obligations, which means is the person liable to pay advance tax? Is the question yes or no? No, no, no. Understand, people. This is the winnings. This is the winnings, which means the other person when he gave you the winnings would have deducted TDS under one ninety-four B at the rate of. 30% meaning 5 lakhs kamala 30% he would have deducted number is 1 lakh 50 so 1 lakh 56 is your tax tds for you is 1 lakh 50 you need to discharge this is less than 10000 so do you have to pay advance tax you only have to pay self assessment tax done It's only four twenty, huh? You do. It's like, it's like it's only it's it's already six o'clock. Marry in the day, nigga. We'll do this last question, then we'll take a break. Okay. It's anyway fifth question. We have three more only to. Okay. Next question. Mr. Rajiv is the age fifty years, a resident individual and a practicing chartered accountant. You are into profession. You are into profession. Furnishes you the following receipts and payments. Focus, focus. Follows you, furnishes you the following receipts and payments. Start from the here. It is left side. Here it is left side. Opening balance of cash relevant, not relevant. Opening balance of cash relevant, not relevant. Not relevant. Asset side. Fees from professional service fifty nine lakh thirty eight thousand. You are not liable for presumptive. This is income. Rent fifty thousand. Don't know. Motor car loan for Canara Bank two lakh fifty thousand. We don't know. We don't know whether the car is for personal or business or hold. As of now, PGBP. As of now, PGBP. Come to the right side. Staff salary. Or other administrative expense. Office rent. Housing loan repaid to SBI includes interest of eighty-eight thousand. What to do in PGBP first? What to do in PGBP? Do nothing in PGBP. You are doing direct method. Where is the net profit in the question? Is this your income and expenditure account or your receipts and payments account? Which means you will need to follow direct method. Start from revenue, go to your expense. When you don't even have a net profit, what will you disallow? What to do in PGBP? Ignore. Come to. 
come to HP amount is that's all, huh? Very good. ATC one lakh. Yes or no? Housing loan repayment is covered under ATC. Life insurance premium, 10% of sum assured, 24,000. What to do? ATC. Motor car acquired in Jan 23 by account pay check. This is an asset. You will claim depreciation at the rate of Less than 180 days put to use, 50% of the depreciation. Medical insurance premium for self and wife paid by account paycheck. It is obvious that you cannot put to use before acquiring. Correct, ma. There is only two options. Either it will be less than 50% or it will be no depreciation. Here it will definitely be less than 50% because no depreciation never has income tax asked. Okay. At, navy, at no given point of time is it possible that you can acquire it or you can put to use before you acquired itself. Which means it is going to be less than 50% or it is going to be no depreciation. And ICA will never test no depreciation in inter at least. Okay. Next one. Medical insurance premium self and wife paid by account pay check. 80? D. Amount allowed. Fully allowed. Books bought for 1st July 2022, annual publications by account pay check 20,000 rupees. 40% depreciation, assuming it is put to use on 1st July. Assuming it is put to use on 1st July. If at all the question below comes and says different, we will change it. Next, computer acquired on 1st November 2022 by account pay check professional use. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Domestic drawings. Ignore. I don't know what foreign drawings will be. <laughs> PPF subscription. Huh? ATC. Now you have three ATCs, correct? Huh? 1 lakh 20 plus 1 lakh plus 24. It is 1 lakh 44. Still within the limits. Still within the limits. Next one motor car maintenance. As of now, don't know anything, so therefore PGBP. Hold. Closing balance. Ignore. He further gives you the following information. He occupies 50% of the building for own residence and let out the balance for the residential use at the monthly rent of 5,000. What building is he talking about? Where is the rent? Acha, sorry. Yes. Is there a building on the right side? Has he purchased any building in the right side? No. There is only one housing loan. There is only one housing loan. It says 50% of the building is used for own residence and the balance is used for let out at the monthly rent of 5000. The building was constructed during the year 97 98 where the housing loan was taken. What is going to happen? 50% of the building, rent is given as 50,000, which means the building was occupied for. 10 months. The building was occupied for 10 months. It doesn't matter because they have not given you the expected rent. They have not given you the expected rent. So you need to now compute the HP. You have two kinds of HP. One is called as SOP. One is called as LOP. SOP interest is what is the amount of SOP interest? 44. You can claim a deduction of only by the property was acquired before 97 98. 97, 97 98 is when you took it. So, therefore, it is 30,000. LOP 40. full 44,000 will be the interest on loan claim from 50,000 into 70 percent. Correct? 50,000 minus 30 percent will give you 15,000. So, it will become 35,000. 35,000 minus 44,000 is okay. 
34,000 minus 44,000 is 9,000 of loss. 9,000 of LOP loss. 30,000 of SOP loss. Total becomes 39,000 of HP loss. Hold it. Hold it. If you have salaries, you will set off. If you don't have salaries, you will set off against PGBP. Hold the deduction. Here you have a HP loss of 39,000. Done? Motor car was put to use for both personal and official, obviously. One fifth of the motor car is used for personal purpose. No car loan interest was paid during the year. What has happened? You have taken the motor car for personal and official. So come through the left side. You have paid a motor car. You have taken a motor car loan of two lakh fifty thousand. Nothing of the principal was repaid. Nothing of the principal was repaid. So which means the interest cost will be liable for you. Yes or no? Amount of interest is. How did you get it? Two lakh fifty into. Use your heads, people. Motor car loan is given as 2,50. Interest rate is 9%. If you directly multiply by 9%, you are assuming the loan was taken on 1st April. When did you acquire the car? Shan. You acquired the car in Shan. So, which means you, need now, you now need to make two assumptions. You now need to make two assumptions. Assumption number one, did you take the loan on 1st April or did you take the loan on 1st January? If you take the loan on 1st January, it will only be for 3 months and fully allowed as a deduction subject to the 1 5th. Subject to the. If you come and say, no, no, Rahul, I took the loan on 1st April. I took the loan on 1st April. Now you have a problem because what has happened? You have not put to use the asset until January, which means the interest on that loan from April to January needs to be capitalized borrowing cost. Borrowing cost. Whatever is the interest until January will become capitalized. After January, you will allow as a deduction. Okay, so now you need to make an assumption. What do you want? You took it on January. If you took it on January, you have Jan, Feb, and March, which means three months of interest. Two lakh fifteen to nine percent into three months. Five six two five. This is for the whole car. Only one fifth can be. Huh, only one fifth can be disallowed. Seri, okay, fine. Only four fifth has to be allowed. Seri, only four fifth has to be allowed. Yes, yes. Is that the end of the adjustment? Is that the end of the adjustment? No. Come to the right side. You have a motor car. This is at the rate of seven point five. This will into become four by five. Done? No. You have one more item called as motor car maintenance. Ten thousand into. 4 by 5. Motor car is one of the favorite questions of ICI. Okay. Whenever you see a motor car somewhere, please keep your eyes open and check where and all it is. Check where and all it is. Everywhere they will put it as official purpose and personal purpose. You need to make an adjustment everywhere. You need to make an adjustment everywhere, whether it is in maintenance or in interest or in depreciation. Clear? Yes. Yes. The return down value of the assets are given to you as follows. Furniture and fitting is 60,000 rupees. Depreciation rate is 10. Plant and machinery. Computers. Mr. Raji follows regularly the cash system of accounting. Is there any uh, is there any payment on credit showing here? Is there any payment on credit showing here? Yes, there is. There is a mistake which you did. You took the motor car interest of 5625. Is it there on the payment side? It's not there on the payment side, which means it was not paid. Which means it was not paid. If it was not paid, cash system of accounting, you cannot claim it as a deduction, meaning that will be ignored fully. That will be ignored fully. Purida. Yes, question comes and says the person is following cash system of accounting, meaning you can only claim what is actually paid. Did you pay the motor car loan interest? No, which means can you claim as deduction? No, you will only claim it as deduction in the year in which you. Okay, second favorite thing of ICI to always come and check for cash system and credit system of accounting. Okay, you have to be extremely careful when ICI comes and asks something in cash model or credit model. If they are asking something in cash model, you need to be extremely careful to only allow actual payments and not allow any kind of accrual payments. 
not allow any kind of accrual payments clear yes compute the total income of rajiv assuming he is not doctor for 115 bsc hey, i will give you this material so the answers are already there okay but that does not mean that you will not practice solve the answer on your own then verify it from the answer okay yes can we take a break yes when do you want to come back for 45 let's come at 5 let's come at 5 completing the balance set of the questions we are in question number 6 we are in question number 6 let's read the question it says mr ramdeen is age 36 years uh, mr ramdeen is age 33 years working as a sales manager with frozen limited has provided you the following information for the year ended 31st march 2020 3 the basic salary is given to you you are under salaries taxable exempt into 180 da 50% of his for retirement benefits amount taxable is only 50% for retirement one lakh 44000 commission as a percentage of turnover 0.5 0.5 of what? It's given in the next line. 0.5% into 50%, 50 lakhs number is bonus 50,000. Bonus taxable gratuity. Very good. please understand read the question what does it say mr ramdeen is working currently mr ramdeen is working currently with you working currently gratuity at the time of employment is be extremely careful about this own contribution to rpf atc employer contribution to rpf 20% of basic salary total contribution is how much basic salary is 180 20% of that will become 36000 is it more than 750 is it more than 750 therefore fully exempt correct huh? subject to 12% of salary salary means basic plus da forming part plus turnover commission so 180 plus 72000 plus 25000 total 277000 into 12% 33240 you have paid a total pf of 36000 you are allowed exemption of 33240 therefore taxable amount is clear interest credited in rpf account 15% per annum up to 9.5% of what what is the amount taxable that's all how did you get it very good the question itself very clearly comes and says that the interest is 15% per annum and the interest amount is 15000 therefore 15000 divided by 15% into 5.5 9.5 is exempt so 5.5 is taxable amount is done gold ring worth 10000 was given by the employer on his 25th wedding anniversary that i know under which head salary why given on account of employer employee relationship will be taxable under the head salaries music system purchased on 1st april 2022 by the company for 85000 and given to him for personal use that i know what is the amount 
அமௌண்ட் டாக்ஸபிள் டேய் பார்த்துட்டு பேசுறதுக்கு நானே பேச வேண்டாம் அமௌண்ட் டாக்ஸபிள் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் விச் ஹெட் இட் இஸ் சேலரிஸ் வாட் ஆர் யூ டூயிங் ஆர் யூ டிரான்ஸ்ஃபரிங் அ மொபைல் அசெட் ஆர் ஆர் யூ யூசிங் அ மொபைல் அசெட் you are using a mobile asset in use of mobile assets there are three kinds of asset computers motor cars others this will fall in asset will be 10% of the cost this will be 10% of the cost of the asset clear 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 yes two light good vehicles owned by him were leased to a transport company against the fixed charges of 6500 books of accounts not maintained we are under presumptive you have two light good vehicles hired at 6500 does 6500 relevant not relevant not relevant what is relevant two light good vehicles 7500 per month for two vehicles so it is 7500 into 2 into 12 this will be taxable under the head received interest of 5680 on bank fdrs on 24 4 and interest of 6786 from debentures of indian company this amount is net this amount is net meaning tds is deducted you know tds on interest is 10% so if 6786 is 90% what is 100% 7540 the interest on debentures will be taxable at the rate of 7540 under the head ifos interest on fdrs interest on bank fdrs huh? it will be taxable under ifos what is the amount here is where you need to make an assumption here is where you need to make an assumption whether tds was deducted not deducted because the word used is received meaning kaila vandirukku which means it would have come in hand after tds after tds in which case tds would be applicable ideally ideally but unfortunately if you look at the number the number is what 5860 need tds portalo it will come as some 10000 only which technically means that the gross amount will be less than 40000 the gross amount will be less than 40000 which means tds would have not been deducted tds would have not been deducted so now you need to make a choice whether tds is there or not there for me at least 5860 looks like a round number 5860 looks like a round number so i will assume it is non tds so therefore the amounts taxable are 5860 plus 7560 540 you have a choice you can make whatever you want you can make whatever you want next one made payments by checks of 15370 towards life insurance policies and 22500 for mediclaim policy of self and spouse first one is 80c second one is 80d fully allowed partially allowed 80c allowed do you have an 80c until now own contribution to rpf you already have 180 so this is the second 80c investment in nsc 30000 80c fdr of sbi of 5 years 50000 same 80c only long term investment some 80c long term investment so 50 plus 30 is 80 80 plus 15000 is 95 370 plus 30000 is 120370 still not cross the limits still not cross the limits donation of 11000 to an institution approved under 80g 50% with qualifying limits 5100 to prime minister national relief fund 
हंड्रेड परसेंट विदउट लिमिट गिवेन बाई वे ऑफ चेक गिवेन बाई ऑफ चेक सो फाइव थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड यू कैन क्लेम फुल्ली फॉर लेवन थाउजेंड यू नीड टू चेक द लिमिट्स यू नीड टू चेक द लिमिट्स कंप्यूट द होल ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम रेड्यूस योर चैप्टर सिक्स एक्सेप्ट फॉर एटी जी Except for full ATG, compute 10% on that, and then you need to check for the number. That number is 50%. Compute the total income and tax payable thereon. Assume in Ramadhan does not offer 115 BSC. Do you have any special tax rate incomes in this? No, right? No. Okay. So these are your salary incomes: 1 lakh 80, 1 lakh 44, 25, 50, 30, 2760, 5500, 10,000, and 7,000, and 8,500. Add all these items. Add all these items. Four lakh, four lakh fifty-five thousand seven hundred and fifty-five thousand seven hundred and sixty is your gross salary. Is your gross salary? You will reduce. Fifty thousand standard deduction number will become four lakh five thousand seven hundred and sixty under the head salaries. Under the head PGBP you have one lakh eighty thousand. Under the head other sources you have five eight six zero plus seven five four zero. Thirteen thousand four hundred. Add all the three. Give me the gross total income. Five lakh ninety nine thousand one hundred and Sixty is your GTI. Is your GTI reduce eighty C? If you notice, eighty C is fifteen thousand three seventy plus eighty thousand plus thirty thousand. One lakh ten thousand. One lakh twenty five seven three seventy. Yeah. One lakh twenty five thousand three hundred and seventy. Number is seventy-three seven ninety. In this, you will reduce eighty D. Number is twenty-two five hundred. Number four fifty-one. Will you compute eighty T uh, eighty uh, G on this? Why? Adanda. Is the is this the ATI for ATG? Yes, sir. No. You have eighty TTA also, correcta? Oh, you yeah, are thirty three years. Okay, sorry. Your eighty TTA will be zero on this because it's an FDR. It's a fixed deposit and an interest on debentures. You can claim eighty TTA only on savings yes. account. So therefore, eighty TTA is zero. Therefore, your qualifying limit becomes four lakh fifty one two ninety. इधर का ten percent is four five one two nine. You have contributed eleven thousand. You can claim the full thing, which means deduction for you will be eighty G. One is hundred percent of five thousand one hundred. One is fifty percent of five five thousand five hundred. Reduce both. Four lakh forty thousand six hundred and ninety. Is there any other adjustment pending? No. This is your total income. Compute the tax. They are interested to calculate. So wait. Compute the tax. For those who have stopped calculating, good for you. Waiting for the last one. What is the tax, ma? What is the tax? You are telling a number. Seriously, what are you laughing for? What is the number, ma? Honestly. Sorry, ma. Including CSA, excluding CSA. You forgot to give a bit. 
Okay, your total income is four lakh forty thousand, which is less than five lakh rupees, which means you are not be you will be eligible for rebate. Fortunately, in this question, there are no special incomes also. There are no special incomes also, which means everything will be eligible for rebate. Tax becomes zero. But the problem is not with that. The problem is not with that. The problem is that you have a TDS somewhere. You have a TDS somewhere. The question is not asking you for the tax. They are asking for the tax payable. So what is happening? Tax will become zero minus you have a TDS somewhere for your debentures. You have assumed for FDR there is no TDS, but debentures there is a TDS. What is the TDS? Six thousand seven eighty-six minus seven five four zero. Huh? Seven fifty-four. Is there any other place where there was an TDS? No, right? Interest on FDS, we assume no TDS. So therefore, this became 754. Therefore, the refund due is 750. 750. When the question asks you for a tax liability in your 12 marks question, you need to be careful about TDS also. Okay? Okay? Yes. 750 is your tax payable. Clear? Yeah? yeah? Great. <laughs> Which question would you want to do? Let's do seven. You will do seven, eight, we'll discuss. Okay. Question reads From the following particulars furnished by Mr. X for the year ended 31st March 2023, you are requested to compute the total income and the tax payable, assuming that he does not opt for paying tax under 115 BAC. Mr. X retired on 31st December 2022 at the age of 58 after putting in 26 years and one month of service from a private company at Mumbai. He was paid a salary of 25,000 per month and a HRA of 6,000 per month. He paid rent of 6,500 6, per month during the tenure of his service. This is HRA of 6,500. On retirement, he was paid a gratuity of 3,50,000. He was covered under Gratuity Act. He has not received any gratuity at any point of time earlier other than this gratuity. He has an accumulated leave balance of 15 days per annum during the period of his service. This was encashed by X at the time of his retirement. A sum of 3,15,000 was received by him on account of the leave encashment. Average salary can be taken as 24,500 rupees. Employer allowed 30 days per annum. After retirement, he ventured into textile business and incurred a loss of 80,000. So, He incurred a loss of 80,000 for the period ended 31st March 2023. Mr. X has deposited 1 lakh rupees in PPF. That's all is the question. You have exactly 6 minutes. Adi Napotama. I would be happy if your exam would have let me come in your exam hall and let you fail, but no. I am a very slow writer. If I come and help you in exam, you will fail only. I need everything with the pakka format. Straight forward six mark question, I need the full format. Assume you are in your exam hall writing the compulsory question number one, six mark question, full format. How do you start? Put a heading first. Computation of total income of Mr. X for the assessment year 23-24. Put a heading. Computation of total income of Mr. X for the assessment year 23-24. How many columns? Two or three? Two or three? Three columns. You have a PGBP also. Three columns, particulars with three columns. Start with income from salaries. Start with income from salaries. People only black pens on the class. If before two months also you're not able to get a practice of your black pens, it'll become a problem for your exams. Don't make that mistakes. Get used to your pen now itself. Okay, income from salaries under that start from the format. 
if you recall the format the first format is basic put basic number is number is how did you get it 25000 into 9 months if you are showing a computation make sure it's there on the book also so basic salary within brackets 25000 into 9 in the middle column 25000 into 9 middle column next after basic comes da is there a da in the question no next bonus is there a bonus in the question no then commission not there then other allowances first allowances leave and first allowances leave and cash hey, my format ma my format leave and cashment point number two leave and cashment point number two leave and cashment under that under that actual received under that actual received point number first column amount is uh, 3 lakh 15 first column 3 lakh 15 thousand first column 3 lakh 15 thousand next line less less exempt less exempt hyphen least of the three or four three, three or four uh? four less exempt hyphen exempt uh, sorry uh, less exempt hyphen least of the following four uh, actual put it in particular column itself put it in particular column itself number is three lakh fifteen next one notified limit ceiling limit whatever three lakhs same in particular column itself point number three average salary of 10 months average salary of 10 months here they have itself come and told you that the average salary is 24500 so 24500 into 10 correct no she is doing 245 into 10 adanalu yosikiram 24500 into 10 is 245000 same in particular column itself point number d leave credit into average salary what is a leave credit what is a leave credit 15 i know into what 26 into 15 by 30 26 into 15 by 30 what is 30 you are computing in months format 26 into 15 by 30 into 24500 average salary number 318500 same in particular column same in particular column least of the four 245 bring it to the first column bring it to the first column in brackets 245 3 lakh 15 is your leave salary 2 lakh 45 is exempt final answer is 1 lakh 5000 bring it to the second column 1 lakh 5000 bring it to second column done done you understand how the format looks like after leave encashment hra same style go ahead below hra actual number is Number is 54. First column or second column? First column. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Less, less exempt. Least of 3 or 4? Uh? 3. Improve your writing speed quickly. It's given, no, it's covered. Yes, least of the three. Point number A. Actual number is. Hey, you have it on your book, da. Actual HRA number is 54. Next. 50% of salary or 40% of salary. What will you choose? What will you choose? Why? Very good. Look at the first line. 
he is working in a private company at Mumbai, 50 percent of salary. Answers are always there on the question itself, you just have to look at it properly. 50 percent of salary, 50 percent of what? That I know, what is salary? You tell me. 50 percent of what? 2,25,000. 50% of 2,25,000. You are computing HRA month basis. You are computing HRA month basis. Your current salary is basic plus DA plus turnover commission. No DA given, no turnover commission given. Directly take basic. 50% of 2,25,000. 1,12,500. Point number C. Rent paid minus 10% of salary. Rent paid minus 10% of salary. Below that, show the computation. What is the rent paid? 6,500 into 9 minus 22,500. Number is? 36,000, least of the three, 36, amount taxable for HRA is 18,000, after HRA came special allowances, do you have special allowance, no, do you have other allowance, no, coming to retirement benefits, first item is gratuity, do you have a gratuity, yes, go ahead. Point number three, what and all are we done? We are done with basic HRA leave and cashment. Yes, what is point number three? Gratuity, under that actual, actual, actual amount is 3,50,000 first column less least of the 3 less least of the 3 point number A actual point number B 20 lakhs point number 3 15 by 26 into number of completed years into last drawn salary last drawn salary. Non POGA cases it is last drawn salary of 10 months, POGA cases it is only last drawn salary. So 15 by 26 into 26 into 25 or 24? Huh? 25. It is 25,000 because last drawn salary was 25,000. While his average salary might be 24,500, that is only relevant if it is non-POGA. We are in POGA case, therefore it is 25,000. Least of the three? 3,50,000. 3,50,000 is the exemption. Your actual received is 3,50,000, exempted is 3,50,000, therefore taxable amount is zero. Is there any other salary in the question? No. Total it up. Arrive at? Gross salary, total it up, arrive at the gross salary, same second column itself, same second column itself, number is 3,48,000, less, next line, less deduction under section 16, less deduction under section 16, amount is 50,000, second column, amount is 50,000, second column, total it up, Bring the answer to the right column. 2 lakh 98. 98. This will go into your last column. This will go into your last column. With this, we are done with salaries. Next is do you have HP? No. Do you have PGBP? Yes. Next heading. Next heading. PGBP. Next heading. PGBP. Hyphen. 
hyphen 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 to be carried forward hyphen to be carried forward since for those who are staring at my face do you want to write november exam since since what since what Huh? Business loss cannot be set off against salary income. Done. Go to the last column. Put a dash. Total it up. GTI is. Two lakh ninety-eight thousand GTI. Two lakh ninety-eight thousand. Then less chapter six a less chapter six a under that eighty C hyphen hyphen PPF hyphen PPF amount is. One lakh. Put it directly in the last column. Put it directly in last column within brackets. Total. Sorry. One lakh ninety-eight thousand. Total income is one lakh ninety-eight thousand. Total income is one lakh ninety-eight thousand. What is the question asking you for? Total income and tax payable. So total income first double underline, close the answer. First double underline and close the answer. Next line. Tax liability. Next line. Tax liability. Hyphen. I have no idea. What is the GTI people? Okay. Okay. What have you done? What is the leave encashment taxable? Huh? Hey, na na, erte ning da na erte ya. Change your leave encashment, people. Leave encashment is. Three lakh fifteen minus two lakh forty five. Therefore, it is seventy thousand. Now, pay so now I can only teach you income tax calculator is not my job. Seventy thousand is your leave and cashment. Gross salary is two lakh sixty. Ah, sixty three thousand. Gross salary is two lakh sixty three thousand. Standard deduction is fifty thousand. What is your salary? Three lakh thirteen. Gross salary is three lakh thirteen thousand. Standard deduction is fifty thousand. Therefore, taxable gross total income is two lakh sixty-three thousand. Total income is also two lakh sixty-three thousand. Next line. Tax liability hyphen hyphen nil hyphen nil since since Mr. X. Since Mr. X is eligible for rebate, two lakh sixty-seven so nigla. What is the what is the total income? Three okay. Tax payable nil since the total income is below basic exemption limit. 
tax payable hyphen nil. I told you, no, never trust me. You are writing exam. I am not writing. Tax payable hyphen nil since total income is below basic exemption limit. Close the answer. Double underline and close the answer. 1,63,000. Done. You understand how the format looks like? Yes. Any doubts? No? Why would you pay it for 12 months? You quit the company when? When did your HRA stop? You pay rent for 12 months, who cares? But I will give you HRA only for 9 months, no? Clear? Yes? Can we go to the last question? With this, you will done me all. With, with this, you will be done with all the study material questions. Apart from that, in my uh, past exam questions, I have two questions which I have given you in a question bank. Okay, so we'll do that question from your question bank also. Okay, so let's look at the last question from your study material. The question comes and says, Rose and Rosa, Rosia, Terry, Rosie, Rosie and Mary are sisters, born and brought up at Mumbai. Rosie got married in 1982 and settled in Canada since 1982. Mary got married and settled in Mumbai. Both of them are below 60 years. Below are the following information. Who is Rosie? Who is Mary? Rosie is. Mary is. Yes, this is the first step in the exam. This is the first step in the exam. Before you start your question itself, you need to write a para first about telling what is happening in the scenario and who is a what. Who is what? If you don't give this para, this itself will carry two marks. This itself will carry two marks. That's why I told no. Identify your golden rules. Golden rules was what? Identify the person and the residential status. Do you know the status? No. You need to find out the status. So please have a para on that also. Okay. Having identified its NR or R, let's understand what is the tax. First one, pension income received from state government. Rosie, not there. Mary, 60,000. Taxable exempt. Taxable exempt. Taxable under the head. You tell me. Salaries. Pension received from Canadian government. Not taxable. Long term capital gains on sale of land in Mumbai. 1 lakh and 1 lakh. CG, short term capital gains on sale of shares of Indian listed companies in respect of which STT paid. This is 112, this is The next one is short term capital gains on which STD is paid, therefore it is 1 1. Bane. LIC premium paid 80. C. Premium paid to Canadian Life Insurance Corporation at Canada 80. C. There are no such restrictions. You can claim 80. C. You can claim 80. C. It is not life insurance of India, it can be life insurance of foreign also. Medical policy premium paid by account paycheck 80. D. Deposit in PPF. Rent received in respect of house property at Mumbai. You are required to compute the total income and the tax liability. Yes. Starting from Rosie, then Mary. Rosie, what are the incomes? LTCG 112 amount is 1 lakh. Then 111 20,000. Then, then, then. HP minus 30 percent standard deduction. The word says received. The word says received, meaning this is in hand. This is in hand. 60,000 length, 30 percent reduced. Pana, it is coming to 42,000. 42? 42, Gross total income is 1,62,000 less 
80 see 40000 therefore it becomes 1 lakh 22000 done coming to mary you have a salary of 10000 the word says receive receive kaila vandha the cost is not important what is your income yes next 11 2 1 lakh then 11 mane 2 lakh 50000 then then hp ha huh? 21000 total gross total Three lakh eighty one thousand less eighty C number is thirty thousand no ten thousand plus twenty thousand thirty thousand less eighty D number is twenty five thousand is there any other deduction no deduction total deduction allowable huh total deduction allowable. What is this? Ma, thirty thousand. No, thirty thousand plus twenty-five. Total is. It would be so nice if I come and write your exam. No? Chapter six A cannot be claimed on special tax rates. Chapter six A cannot be claimed on special tax rates, meaning you can only claim it on your salary and HP. Therefore, your total income is three lakh fifty thousand. Done. Go ahead, compute the tax. Let's see if you get it right this time. வேணாம் एग्जाम எழுதுறீங்களா கம்ப்யூட் தி டாக்ஸ் ஃபார் போத் தி கேसेस ரோஸி அண்ட் மேரி கம்ப்யூட் தி டாக்ஸ் ஃபார் போத் ரோஸி அண்ட் மேரி இட்ஸ் डेफिनेटली नॉट ஜீரோ மா I want numbers. If you don't get this number right, leave the attempt and go. We have done about fifty questions now. If after this also you cannot get the answer right, something is wrong. Mary, ah, three thousand. Okay. the more you delay the more class will get extended
सेवन एट थ्री सिक्स फॉर मेरी फिफ्टीन ना फिफ्टीन सिक्स हंड्रेड चलता फॉर और तो थ्री थाउजेंड लेने आ रहे हैं चाहो फिफ्टीन पॉइंट आनी पार्टी पोर है You give me one, two, and all. It's wrong only. Can you give me my theory? Now I can't get it. Panla. I want that forty thousand pesos in the account. we are on 7th day of the class doing day 1 of the class still going bad what is happening here yena ma enge ma prachana calculator mistake ah illa ungalku puriliya rosy zero va aduve thappu Are we finalizing on twenty three nine hundred and two thousand? Uh, are we finalizing on those numbers? Twenty three nine twenty and two thousand six hundred. Is everyone aligned to this? Everyone, people on the back. Fifteen. Match up. Match with him. What is wrong? I want a unanimous answer. I am not going forward until then. What did you do? I want one unanimous answer from the class. Either everyone is failing or everyone is passing. That's all. I am okay. He is not happy. Twenty three nine twenty and two thousand six hundred. All cool. If this computation alone is taking you ten minutes, imagine where you are standing. Imagine where you are standing. You have to write an exam. okay and this tax payable alone is only one mark in this whole question it's only one mark imagine the time you wasted on it okay it was very simple for you to come and say raul i don't know let's go ahead that's all what mistake you did sat on it for 10 minutes this is the no mistake which you have to avoid in your exam hall because this 10 minutes which you wasted is another mark lost for you somewhere else okay i told you very clearly you either get the answer in the first shot or you leave and go never waste time like this you will lose i'm telling you right now also i'm telling it very seriously now telling it very seriously we did this on the day one also if a concept is not clear to you it's okay go home and practice it again it will somehow come to you or else put a chart somewhere make a note somewhere you will get it somehow but never come and waste time like this because you are wasting the time of yourself this will cost you an attempt 
I'll tell you very seriously. It will cost you an attempt. Let's understand what is happening. You are in Rosie, who is a non-resident. With the Rosie being a non-resident, this 40,000 is going from HP, which means HP income left off is 2,000. This 2,000 will go into your basic exemption limit. Tax will become zero. For the balance to the problem is she is a non-resident, so you cannot utilize the basic exemption limit. Will become directly taxable. 1 lakh into 20% 20 is 20,000. 20, 20,000 into 15% is 3,000. 23,000 is your tax payable. Plus 4% says yes, will give you 23,920. Clear? Coming to your resident case, you have a 31,000 of set off. This 31,000 is going from HP and from salaries, which means what is left off is 112 and 112. 112 is taxable at the rate of zero. 112 is taxable at the rate of zero because you are offsetting that under your basic exemption limit. Balance 1,50 is going from here, which means left off is 1,50,000 into 15% number is 22,500 minus 12,500 number is 10,000. sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 1 lakh into 15% is 15,000 minus 12,500 will give you 2,500 plus cess. Done? It's not important that you got the right answer. It's important that you wasted your time. Okay? Careful on these people. Be serious on it. Okay, coming to the last questions, coming to the last questions from your comprehensive questions. Question number one we just discussed, Mr. By carrying on business is done. Question number two is also discussed. Okay, question number two is also discussed, leaving to the balance two questions from your past exams. You are Mr. Murari, a resident individual aged 48 years provided the consultancy services in the field of accountancy, meaning you are professional. Income and expenditure is given to you, meaning you will start from net profit. Start from the right side. Right side says consulting fees is 8 lakh rupees. ADA. You will now have to check for presumptive also. You will now have to check for presumptive also. Opt for whichever is lower. Opt for whichever is lower. You will have to do tax as per uh, PGBP as per normal, PGBP as per presumptive, whichever is lower. So the consulting is given to you. This is PGBP. Share of profit. Reduce from PGBP. Exempt from tax. Interest on savings bank deposit. Reduce from PGBP. Add it to OS. Claim 80 TTA. Claim 80 TTA. Interest on income tax refund. Done. Left side. Salary. Motor car expenses. Uh, here is where you need to check. Definitely there will be something. Depreciation. I don't know. I don't know whether this is as per income tax or as per books. 
assuming is that as per income tax act no problem it will allow next one medical expenses you don't know you don't know hold purchase of computer what to do what to do disallow first disallow first because capital expense then claim depreciation bonus 10000 rupees pgbp general expenses 55 office and administrative 75 excess of income over expenditure this is your starting point done next one the following other information are given to you the salary which is given in the question includes a payment of 12000 per month given to the brother in law who is in charge of marketing department however in comparison to similar businesses the reasonable salary for the brother in law should only be 10000 per month nothing will be disallowed For the purpose of PGBP, only left side of the family is considered. Macha machi ne ke kurtu the unreasonable na irka pordu. Okay, anything paid to these people are supposed to be unreasonable only, so therefore it will not be disallowed. Put a note. Interest on savings bank deposit belongs to his wife who has deposited the money out of the pocket money given to her every month. This income will not go to your OS, will not go to your OS, will be reduced from PGBP and clubbed in the hands of wife. Written down value of the assets are given to you. Motor car is 40% used for personal. Ah, your motor car is now used for personal for 40%. So 58,000 length, 60% will be claimed, 40% will be disallowed. Now, motor car is 40% to be used for personal. So 2 lakhs into 15% into 60% with you having a depreciation below it means that this depreciation will be added back yes or no next furniture and fittings 50,000 rupees 10% depreciation is all depreciation over no you have a purchase of computer here you don't know, you don't know, you don't know right now. If nothing is given, you will assume more than 180 days. Medical expenses are given to you. It includes family planning expenditure of 15,000 incurred for the employees, which is revenue in nature. Huh? Allowed, not allowed. Why? 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 Why disallowed, right? Very good. Family planning expenditures can only be claimed by companies. Family planning expenditures can only be claimed by companies for inter purposes. This is always somehow he remembers. Very good. Family planning expenses will always be disallowed for the purpose of income tax act because it is only for companies. Medical expenditure of 35,000 for father. 80. No, father is 865, right? Okay. So this is 80D. Now the problem which you have is if you look at the expenses of the father, it is 35. Expenses of the employee, it is 15. Total becomes 50. But the expense on the top is uh, what happened to the balance 20? You don't know. You don't know. Here is where you have to make an assumption saying 20 is either for employees, in which case it is allowed, or 20 is for personal, in which case it is disallowed. But the problem is if it is for personal, now who's personal? If it is for self personal, you will get 80. D. Correct? Huh? No. Twenty-five thousand is for medical insurance, not for expenses. Expenses can only be claimed by senior citizen, provided they don't have an insurance. Okay, so you need to make an assumption whether the twenty thousand pertains to employees or for self. 
if it pertains to employees then it is allowed as deduction if it is pertaining to self you will disallow and no further deduction okay you can make that choice next the computer was purchased on 5th june uh, now you know that the computer is purchased on 5th june which means this is eligible for 40 percent depreciation but the problem is the total invoice was paid in the following manner 50 18 000 was paid in cash as down payment on the date of purchase balance amount was paid through account pay check on 10th august Disallowed. What is the cost of the asset? What is the cost of the asset? The actual amount is 80,000, but out of that 80,000, 18,000 you paid by cash, meaning that will be ignored for the purpose of depreciation. It is not disallowed, people. Please understand. Please understand. Disallowed meaning you need to claim an expense. This is a capital item. This is a capital item. It will be ignored for the purpose of depreciation. So, your new cost of computer is 62,000 on which you will claim 40 percent. On which you will claim 40 percent. Clear? Not clear. Bonus was paid on 31st October 2023. Why? Allowed, not allowed. Allowed, not allowed. Allowed. Bonus is covered under 43B. Provision comes and says can be paid up to the due date of return filing. What is the due date for return filing? General expenses include commission payment of 22,000 to Sridhar for the promotion of business on 17th December, sorry, 17th September without deduction of tax at source. Huh. This sell of 30%. Barely resident amount. Hey, you don't look from that, right? You look for Sridhar. You look for Sridhar. Valid question whether it is resident or not. Name itself is Sridhar, so it's assumed it is resident. Assumed it is resident. Unless and until the question specifies otherwise. We have told normally, you know, rates of taxes also we have told if nothing is given, assume it's a resident. Only when it is given that it's non-resident, you will cover as a non-resident. This is a resident case. Disallow 30%. He also received gold coins from a family friend on the occasion of marriage anniversary on 5th December. The market value of the gold coins is given as 55,000. Under IFOS income fully taxable. Do you have any special incomes? No, right? No special incomes for you. One PGBP income is there and then IFOS income is there and then below you have one more IFOS income. Below you have one more IFOS income for the gold chain. Straightforward question. Clear? Just careful. Last question. Last question. One of the very uh, beautiful questions which came in exam once. Okay, it was about six marks, I think. One of the very beautiful questions which came in exam. It takes away a lot of analysis from you. Okay, so look at the question properly and understand where it goes. Okay, it says Mr. Mukesh is born on 1st April 1963. The first thing which will come in your head is he has completed 60 years of age. So, Mr. Mukesh has born on 1st April 1963, has furnished his original return of income on 30th July 2023, within the due date, after the due date, within the due date. He has shown a salary of 7.3 lakhs computed and claimed an interest on savings account of 12,700, fixed deposit of 43,000. What is his salary income? What is his IFOS income? FD of 43 savings of 12,700. With this, we know this much. Okay. He has claimed a deduction of ATC under uh, ATC of 1,50,000, which means the gross total income is 7,85,700 is your gross total income. In this, he has proposed to claim an ATC of 1,50,000. Allowed, not allowed. Allowed, not allowed. 
Hey, allowed, not allowed. Allowed, allowed no problem. He has claimed an ATD deduction of twenty five thousand. Allowed, not allowed. Think about it again. He also claimed an eighty TTA of ten thousand rupees. Allowed, not allowed. Huh? Allowed, not allowed. Not allowed. Why, pa? He is a senior citizen. Should have gone into A T T T B, but for some reason claimed A T T T A. Basically, they are asking you. You are the C A. You are the C A. Some guy called Mukesh has come to you. Has come and told you that my salary is seven lakh thirty. F D is forty three. Savings is twelve thousand seven hundred. I have filed my return claiming an A T C of one lakh fifty. A T D of twenty five thousand and A T T T A of 10000 this is what is come and shown you this is what is come and shown you let's look at the question his employer had deducted tds of 33950 from his salary which he adjusted fully against his tax payable they are coming and saying salary ku there was a tds happened how much 33950 which is pertaining to salary how 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 check no total your income 1 lakh 85000 remove panna 6 lakh 6 lakh 700 correct ah 6 lakh 700 can you compute the tax on this hey assuming you are non senior citizen assuming you are non senior citizen let's compute and see the fact that mukesh has computed 80 tta meaning he assumed he is a non senior citizen Which means he would have paid tax using non-senior citizen. Let's compute the tax and see. You know what happens? Six lakh seven hundred minus two lakh fifty will give you. No, no, sorry. Six lakh seven hundred minus five lakhs. Minus five lakhs will give you one lakh seven hundred into twenty percent plus twelve thousand five hundred. Thirty-two six forty plus four percent. Nine, four, six, rounded off to nine, five. Where do you see the number? What do you understand from this? What do you understand from this? You understand that Mukesh, by mistakely, has assumed he is a non senior citizen he has by mistakely assumed that he is a non senior citizen because of which he went to his employer and came and said you deduct tds of 33950 because that is what my tax looks like correct ah yes or no this is what is happening because the question somewhere comes and says he fully adjusted against tax payable meaning tds mottama use aise how will it get used only if you are treating yourself as non senior citizen you understand where the facts are this is para number 1 any doubts you know let's read para number 2 He paid a health insurance premium of thirty-eight thousand by account paycheck for self and wife. He paid one thousand five hundred in cash for his health checkup and four thousand by check for the preventive health checkup for his parents. He also paid a medical insurance premium of thirty-three thousand during the year to ensure the health of his mother, eighty years, staying with his younger brother. He further incurred medical expenditure of twenty-five thousand for his father, age eighty-one years. Who is staying with him? His father is not covered under Medi-Claim policy. This whole para is talking about eighty D. Let's understand what will be the my deduction. Yes, sir. yes, for self and spouse, and then parents. For self and spouse, he paid insurance premium thirty-eight thousand. For self, he paid preventive health checkup of one thousand five hundred, and for parent, he paid. Thousand. He also paid medical premium for parent of thirty three thousand. Yes or no? And also paid medical expenditure of twenty five thousand for father. Anything else? No. All these are eligible. All these are eligible. Yes or no? No. You can only claim five thousand. So let's understand which one will be beneficial. 
which one will be beneficial for self and spouse he can claim a deduction of 50000 he can claim a deduction of 50000 he has only utilized 38000 is only utilized 38000 meaning it is beneficial to keep 1500 here which means i will remove this and make it yes or no yes or no yes so left side will become 39500 right side will become 33 plus 25 is 58000 61500 correct huh? 61500 which will be reduced down to yes or no yes. now technically if you notice this what has he done he has claimed an atd of only 25 that to only for only for self only for self because he assumed he is a non senior citizen even if he was a non senior citizen he was still eligible for the reduction for his parent did he claim that no mistake number 1 yes overall he should have claimed a medical insurance uh, medical deduction of 7 89500 but he did not claim 89500 he ended up claiming only 25000 this is the first analysis we have done correct let's read the balance where are we he seeks your advice about the possibility of revising the return and if possible file is revised return you are required to analyze the narrated facts as per the applicable provisions of the income tax act and clarify whether he needs to file a revised return and for what reasons and for what reasons please advise him suitably and if needed recompute his income and the tax payable along with the refund due for the assessment year 23 24 question number 1 should he file a revised return no. Should he file a revised return? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Why? What mistakes have we done? Mistake number one, he assumed he is a non senior citizen. Mistake number two, he claimed AT TTA instead of TTB. Mistake number three, ATD did not claim for parents. Self claim also did not claim for 50,000. Three mistakes. Yes, in these scenarios, he needs to file a revised return. If he files a revised return, what will be his income is the question. Yes, so you already know your GTI. Is your GTI going to change? No, your GTI is not going to change. So, which means let us understand what will be my actual deduction. What will be my actual deduction? Nothing given about ATC. So, ATC will remain as is, correct or not? Coming to ATTTB. ATTTB. How much interest can he claim as deduction? How much can he claim? 50,000 maximum. What is the total interest? 55,700. He can claim 50,000. Then, then, then. 80 D. You have already computed. You will claim 89,500. Therefore, 7,85,700 minus 1,50 minus 50 minus 80. What is 2,96? All these together? Okay. 4,96? 2. He initially offered an income of 6,700. Now we are telling he should offer an income of 200. If his income becomes 200, his tax will become 0. His tax will become Zero. If his tax becomes zero, if his tax becomes zero, employer had deducted something called as PDS of thirty three nine sixty nine fifty of. 33950. If he files a revised return and shows his tax is 0, he will get a refund of 33950. Should he file a return? Not file a return. He should file a revised return because he has paid extra taxes. He has paid extra taxes. So you have to give the reasons as a CA. As a CA, you have to give the reason. First mistake done by Mukesh is that Mukesh assumed he is a non-senior citizen. Since he was born on 1st April 1963, he is assumed to have completed 60 years on 31st March 19... 2023. And therefore, he will be eligible for a 
eligible for a higher basic exemption limit as well as 80 TTB as well as 80 D. Next, what mistakes he did is as follows. Mistake number one, he claimed only 80 TTA and not TTB. Mistake number two, he claimed 80 D only for 25,000 that too for self. He needs to claim it for self at 39,000 and for parents at 50,000. Mistake number three. Huh? Uh, no, no, that's not a mistake. Uh, mistake number three is that ADTTA TTA, TTB. He should have not opted under TTA, but should have opted under TTB. With the opting under TTB, his total income will become 4,96,200. With his total income being 4,96,200, his tax will become zero on account of rebate. On account of rebate. And therefore, whatever TDS deducted would be fully allowed as a refund. Would be fully allowed as a refund. Therefore, Mukesh should file a return of income before 31st December 2023. 31st December 2023. See, he seeks your advice about the possibility of revising return. Yes. Is there a possible to file revised return? Yes. What are the reasons you will file the return? Four reasons. Does he need to revise his return and for what reasons? Four reasons. Please advise him suitably and if needed, recompute his income. Income will become 4,96. Tax liability will become 0. But refund will become 33,950. When is he? Uh, has he given a date? No. He has filed the original return on 30th July. So when you conclude, you will have to come and say he will have to file the revised return on or before 31st. December 2023 in order to claim such benefits. In order to claim such benefits. Clear? Yes. Done. With this, we are done with the syllabus. Okay. Great. With this, we are done with what is the syllabus of Income Tax Act. I have technically not skipped anything to my understanding. We have covered every chapter. We have covered every chapter along with every provision. Some here and there I would have told you this provision not relevant for exam. That and all is definitely not relevant for exam. I am not telling you just because it's fast track. I Normal course also I will not teach it to you. Normal course also I would have not taught it to you. You can ask my past students. Okay. So clarifying to you, fast track went like a full course. Fast track went, went like a full course. We did all the questions which he had. The only compromise which we probably would have done is not solved many sums here in the class. Because... you had to practice. It's not because it's fast track. I generally take a fast track for 10 days. I still have three more days left with me. I still have three more days left with me. I could have might as well come for the next three days and taken sums for you. Intention is not that. Intention is not that you coming and doing the sum in the class is the biggest problem because I do the sum for you. And then you come and you feel confident that you have done all the sums. Next day one order mistake is coming on day seven. Okay. The only reason that is happening is because of Lack of practice. The lack of awareness and the lack of practice is causing the problem. I am noticing this from the day one. I am noticing this from the day one. This is not the time to make that kind of mistake, people. I know most of you people have come with that kind of background where you have already failed once or twice. Okay. And it's already hurt you enough. It's already hurt you enough. This is the last time this should happen. Okay. The only way it can be overcome is by devotion. Practice is one side. Practice is one side, it will overcome by devotion only. That is the only way, okay? Any subject can be overcome only by way of a devotion. You need to have that kind of devotion to yourself and tell that boss, I have already made this mistake once, probably, or twice, probably. This is the last time I'm making this kind of mistake. It should never happen again, okay? That is the only kind of thought which can help you score your exam. At the end of the day, like I'm clarifying to you, it is not important for you to know the whole 60 marks not important okay i understand where the pain is i understand where the pain is the subject is vast enough some extent we have been able to remember everything to the extent what we could do in this eight questions i understand most of the provisions were on your head right now correct or not yes but i can assure you this will not be until may it will not human tendency human tendency you will ignore or you will forget because you have other subjects also to go okay that kind of thought can only be overcome by way of devotion Okay, you need to keep revising, you need to keep devoting yourself. You are already in the end of March right now. Somewhere at the end of March. You are already at the end of March. You hardly have one more month to go. And this one more month, you have four papers, eight papers, whatever papers you have. But that's the only thing which you have in your hand. And so, it is not the time for you to start reading again now. 
okay any subject if you have chosen that you are going to start reading just now i'm sorry please skip that attempt i will tell it to you very honestly i'll tell it to you very honestly if you are only starting to read a subject just now okay this one month is only for your revisions is only for your revisions and i'm not saying revisions meaning you come you go back to your old question bank and you start solving again no that does not mean revision that's basically you doing the sum again okay and that's nothing but you sitting and doing the full course again not valid not relevant useless of it okay the intention for you for the next one month is to revise the whole provisions assume you are ready for the exam and write exams right in the way of marks in the way of marks please understand people a lot of people fail because of the fear of failure a lot of people fail because of the fear of failure you are not used to the paper you are not used to the paper you might read as confident as you want okay today you will give me all the answers which you want but you might have done this earlier also there is no magic which i have done right now maybe i have explained or simplified some things for you but i have not done any magic if you have not failed in the past the reason is because what is happening you knew things in the past also but when you enter the exam all things go blank why is that happening because you are not used to that kind of atmosphere you have been reading 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 for 6 months but you never have put into test you never have put into test the mocks will help you with that the mocks will help you with that i am not telling you need to pass the mocks i told you on the day one also it is okay to fail because you are not failing in the final exam you can only fail here okay you have two mocks coming up one already is going on right now and the other one is coming up yes my request to you very sincere request attempt the mocks attempt the mocks fail it's okay be happy that you are failing be happy that you are failing because next to, to next time when you pass you will be happy that you failed here and passed there never regret that kind of position where you ignore this and then fail there i always tell my friends one thing first time when you start writing your exam you will fail first time you are bound to fail that is how the rule is right if you have skipped the 6 months and you have come to the next leg again you will fail that is how the policy is that is how human tendency is you are supposed to fail that is how the logic is okay but the choice you have to make is not to fail in finals fail here okay if you have already failed here you will never fail again right or not but if you choose to ignore this what is happening the first failure will happen when it will happen in the exam and then what will happen 6 months again gap is coming in again it will restart again you will fail once where will you fail again in that attempt that is where the attempt happens that is where the attempt happens mistake which most people do is that only okay please appreciate people when you do the classes in the sum we are not doing a full fledged chapter okay we are do i mean we are not doing a full fledged paper we are doing a chapter so you know what chapter is being going on and something is fresh on your mind so you can understand but when you enter the exam hall what happens first question is pgvp suddenly clubbing is coming suddenly set off is coming and then you have to also do idt right too many things to remember and too much mix match is happening and you are not used to that kind of atmosphere yes or no yes get used to that atmosphere the biggest way to overcome a fear is to tackle the fear that is what i tell people yes so my humble request please attend the mocks which are going on right now you are fresh in your mind right now you are very fresh in your mind right now take a day or two that's okay take a day or two maybe monday tuesday take a day or two i think a tax paper is already ready done uh, so your tax paper should already be in the icai portal it should already be in the icai portal take the paper write the paper fail it's okay if you pass great if you pass great wonderful enough but if you fail no worries no worries drop a message to me saying raul this time i failed i'll be happy i'll be happy because i'll tell you what now you know where you are making a mistake yes now you know where you are making a mistake next mock is exactly in one month your time starts now with the next mock coming in one month your exact one month what will you do you'll sit and rectify those mistakes you'll sit and understand where those mistakes are happening you'll sit and understand where those challenges are you'll sit and understand whether it's a writing error whether it's an understanding error whether it's an analysis error whether it's a printing error or it's something which your question itself was wrong you will figure that part out that one month is when you'll sit and revise understand what you need to change and next mock you will come back next mock you will just pass you will again not pass you will just pass but that's okay because you failed once you came to a ladder of just a pass next exam is what after that you cannot fail you cannot fail some i have never seen a person who will come and say rahul i failed in mock 1 passed in mock 2 and then failed in mock 3 not happening if you have just passed in mock 2 you will definitely pass in the final exam that is how the policy is you can never fall down people you can never fall down unless until there is a medical contingency okay unless until there is a medical challenge you will never fail that is how the policy is so you have to come to that position okay okay i am telling this not for my tax subject i am telling this for any subject any subject for that matter if you have just now started revising you have that kind of thought rahul i have not done accounts let me start and solve the whole sums again please stop please stop i am telling you right now stop 
you are going to waste a one month solidly on that accounts paper and do nothing out of it because what are you doing you are doing solving the sums on a chapter level will not help you will not understand anything for that matter clear yes so please stop today whatever is your subjects done finish with that kind of subjects start doing mocks and when i say start doing mocks it's not like you take the question paper you see i the theory i the theory i the theory sit and solve solid 3 hours solid 3 hours sit solve understand where the mistake is happening fully realize the fact that is when you will realize this one mistake where you are taking one mark 10 minutes realize all mistakes okay that is when you will realize what the mistake is happening that's when your red pen is in hand for you you take the red pen you understand all those mistakes you highlight everything you put it on a chart somewhere the day when you go for your exam what do you do you look at the chart you come and say rahul i made this mistake in mock 1 i made this mistake in mock 2 this mistake will definitely not happen in the final exam yes or no if you have already done that then you can never fail fail pass exemption only no pass exemption directly exemption okay this is the kind of practice which most of my students have done and they have scored exemptions i can tell you i have told you also when my students uh, um, some people were yet to come but they unfortunately could not come the friends of yours pranav and uh, ramana and all those people those people actually solved papers and when they came to me and they came and said rahul i made one mistake i solved all papers but i solved only dt i solved only dt i did not solve i dt you know what happened they scored 60 65 62 their gst mark was 4 5 3 their dt mark was 58 59 57 52 42 people like that why same mistake okay just because i am telling it does not mean dt is important every subject is important but at the same time the logic works on the same level the logic works on same level at the end of the day while you like dt or you don't like dt doesn't matter you have to pass this the same works for any subject you don't like eis even i don't like eis but we somehow had to pass okay any subject for that matter that rule applies so every subject is important as long as you are in inter and final after you clear that that you that time you can make a decision like me you can come and say boss i don't like anything i am doing only this fair enough no worries but until you are inter and final everything is important and it's not expected that everything you score exemption pass panna porudum yes some subjects you like very much that subjects you do very good you score exemptions balance subjects what will you do score 40 it's okay set off and close that's all never fail that's the whole point okay don't ignore an subject just because you come and say boss i don't like the subject it is okay if i get 20 30 also i will focus and get 70 there what is the point fail is fail only you get 70 there you get 30 there is all going to go waste only correct or not yes give equal weightage and the equal weightage will only come by solving papers clear yes i am expecting this from every one of you here sitting that after mock ones get over you will drop a message to me and tell me what is the mark you got can you do that for me yes. and that has to happen within the next one week within the next one week not more than that after one week income tax na enna na ketrvinga straight up okay that is how it will happen because right now it's fresh on your head right now it's fresh on your head you will be able to do it better one week later suddenly things will go for a toss because this one week you will be studying balance subjects also and suddenly you will miss everything and then you will forget everything okay i don't want you to fail ignoring provisions i want you to fail when things are fresh in your mind because then you are not making a mistake in the provisions you are making a mistake in your paper okay that is why i am telling you to do it in this one week clear yes yes on that note let me clarify also that boss what we have done we have completed the fast track revisions on a very provision level understanding everything to the extent possible if there was something where there was a past or you feel like something you did not understand feel free to message me and i will try to reply to you in any case as a part of my policy itself next month you will hear back from me you'll hear back from me because we are going to run something called as marathon we are going to run something called as a marathon i have a policy to do it every year every year i bring students here morning 7 o'clock you start with me and in about 6 to 7 hours in about 6 to 7 hours we'll read the whole income tax book we'll read the whole income tax book where we will only be discussing the only be discussing the provisions and highlighting here and there saying this is important for exam this is important for exam this is important for exam no sums will be solved that day you will come fresh in the mind on 7th uh, 7 am in the morning and you will leave somewhere about 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock okay 3 4 maybe my mood my mood whatever works okay 3 4 you leave that day and you will come and you will come and say boss today is where i am done with dt because that day the feel is very different the feel is very different it is not me talking that day it is not me talking that day it is you people who talk that day because i just come and I stand here and i'll tell you the heading that's all that is all my job is i will come and i'll stand and i'll say boss leave encashment that's all 
and 500 voices will come from there and come and say, Rao, leave encashment, least of the following, this, 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 this. That is the day when you've made a change. That is the day when you've made a change because that is the day when you look at your book and you know everything in that book. You know everything in that book. You are that confident with that book that, boss, I have everything on my head. You just have to tell me a word and I'll tell you the answer. That is what makes a change. Okay. People who came for the last marathon is the one who passed with an exemption. I can tell you that. I can tell you that because those kind of people, I, I was very super impressed. I knew those people will pass. They stood on this first table and I was just standing here telling nothing. Telling nothing. I just had a heading in my head and they will come back and they will tell me, Rahul, page number 12, it is here, here, here. That's all. And I was surprised because I did not know the page number. You know, the worst part, at least for me, is that I forgot some places there is a provision. There was a PGPP going on. Suddenly, I remembered section 36, bad debts is going on. And then I jumped to 37, which talks about general expenses. And two people from here came and said, no, no, Rahul, this page, there is something called as recovery of bad debts. And then you have something called as insurance premium also. And I had to think twice. And I was like, oh, yes, there is a provision like that. That's when you've made an impact. Yes. Yes. Bring yourself to that position. Bring yourself to that position. I'm not telling it's my book. I'm not telling it's my book. It's your book also. Whatever book you have, whatever faculty you've learned, everything is good enough. At the end of the day, tax is the same. At the end of the day, tax is the same. Just that it will juggle. I will start from here. You will start from there. At the end of the day, we are going to reach the same destination. Yes or no? Yes. So let's work with that. Let's work with that. Uh, I don't have the date in mind, but it's tentatively April 9th. It's tentatively April 9th, Sunday. Okay. Tentatively April 9th is when we'll be meeting. Probably at 7 a.m. in the morning or 6 a.m. in the morning. Mostly 7 a.m. in the morning. Mostly 7 a.m. in the morning. Where we'll complete by 3. 3, 4. Depending on when you're hungry. Depending on when you're hungry, we'll complete by 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. That's what the tentative date right now is. Okay, I'm not sure about it, but I'm just giving it on to you. Okay, clear? Yes. So I will be expecting everyone coming. Hey, it's free. It's free. Okay, again, no, 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 no problem about it. It's completely free. You can bring your own materials. You can talk to me, discuss with me. Your materials is just for showcase that day. Because you will only be talking from your head. Prepare yourself accordingly. Clear? Yes. Two more things. Please get used to your pens, people. Don't make the mistake right now. Please get used to your pens. Now is the time. All mock papers to be solved only with the pen which you're planning to write. Okay. This comedy and all which happens at home. No, your mother will suddenly come and say, I went to a temple. I brought the special pen for you. You write with this. No. No. No mother, no pen, no nothing. Okay. You get used to a pen right now. That is the pen you will carry until your finals. That is the pen you will carry until your finals. No change of pen at the very last minute. And please, please, please get used to your black pen please get used to your black pen it is very important if you are not used to your black pen it will take a huge toll on your writings it will take a huge toll on writings you will waste half the time there only okay most of these people have this unnecessary nonsense where the parents will go they'll go to a temple they'll start uh, angora temple or, uh, i don't know where it is kapalishwara whatever nonsense it is yes that temple they will go and then there is the one orange color special pen kudupanga one special orange color pen with the uh, blue color cap They'll bring that pen and they'll come and say, in the pen, which you in the pen, which it in yelna, kandipa pass side where. No. No. I've seen people fail with that pen. Useless of that things. Okay. Never make that kind of mistake. Ah, yes. If you know that pen already and you already have the pen at your home, start writing with it, then okay. Don't make that mistake to start on the very last day. Exam, Kornal, Munadi, take a pen, start writing. No. I'm sorry. No. Okay. Next, keep your stationary readies. Keep your stationary readies. Always carry two calculators. Always carry two calculators, mandatory, okay? And not two calculators like one cashew and one this thing, no. Same calculator, same design, everything same. The reason is very simple. Sometimes you don't know where your luck is going wrong, okay? Someday someone does not want you to pass. What will happen? Calculator will stop working, okay? You don't know how long you have used it also and how much you have broken it also. You would have pressed it so many times, the calculator itself would have come and said, okay? Have two calculators, one fresh calculator, one old calculator which you want. Have used to your old calculator. The moment it stops, at least try your new calculator, but never skip that. Okay. Have two calculators. And yes, please be safe about where you're traveling. Wherever you're going, I don't know where you're going. You're doing it in Chennai, you're doing it in Madurai, wherever you're working. Be aware of where your exam center is. Be aware of where your exam center is. Reach properly at time. Do not make that kind of challenge. It's not that they will not let you inside the exam hall. It's just that if you reach late, no, you will have pressure on your head. And the moment your pressure on your head comes, no your paper is already gone. Okay. If you enter the exam hall with that kind of pressure saying, I'm already late, 15 minutes gone, five minutes gone. The five minutes would not impact for you as much as the balance two and a half hours will. Yes or no? Yes. Reach a little earlier. It's okay. Okay. And last thing which I told, while it is important that this is your last attempt, 
Well, it is important that this is your last item. It does not mean this is the final destination. Okay. Give your best at whatever cost it is. But after that, forget it off. After that, forget it off. Life happens. Okay. It is written, it will happen. It is not written, it will not happen. Maybe it would took you so many attempts to come this far because you wanted to learn more. Who knows? Okay. But that does not mean that you have to continue learning only. Okay. So you prepare yourself in such a way that this is the final destination. But if at all it is not happening also, it's okay. At the end of the day, you have someone else to blame now. Yes. Never come to that position where you have to blame yourself for your failure. That is my only thought. Okay. Prepare yourself in such a way that you are confident that you will pass. Someone else has made you fail. In that scenario, you will at least be confident. Next time I will pakka pass. There is no second thought. Okay. But never end, exit an exam hall in such a way where you come and say, boss, what? I was the reason why I am failing. That is when you will regret it. Okay. That is the main reason why people drop out of this course because they end up with that kind of regret and they are not able to go forward with it. Okay. If you keep blaming ICI, you know things are always easier. Because what you will come and say, Siri, today I did not pass, tomorrow I will pass. You will at least have that kind of motivation on you. But the moment that thought comes in your head that you are the reason why the failure is happening, you will end the game there itself. Okay. So prepare yourself in such a way that you are confident that you will write what you know. Okay. And when you exit the exam hall, whether you have written to your potential or not, it's okay. It's okay. Come out with that kind of smile on your head coming and saying that I have done what I could. Even if you have left 50 marks, it's okay. It's okay. You have come out with that kind of belief that you did what you could because you had that kind of potential inside you. Okay. At the end of the day, like we say, you know, papers do not decide your future and all those things. All nonsense will happen. Okay. All that you can tell after you pass only. That is a problem. Yes. So until then you don't have an option. You need to write on a paper and you need to get marks on it. But that does not mean that that has to become your deciding factor. Okay. So go with that kind of open thought. Come out with the exam hall. Even if you know that you're going to fail, it's okay. It's okay. At the end of the day, you knew that you gave your potential best. Maybe there was some miss out. Maybe there was some miss out. Next time we'll do it better. That's all is the thought. Okay. Never come with that kind of regret in your head saying that you have made a mistake and you can never recover out of it. That kind of depression is not required. Okay, because people going to that phase itself will, will react very differently, will react very differently. Things get very ugly there. Okay, thoughts and all become very different and then you, I just don't want to get there. Okay, the point is keep yourself calm. It's okay. You are only what, um, 18, 20, 17 also are there. There are some 17s also here, no? 18. 17? Sorry, online students some are 17 also. 17. <laughs> I, I cleared center in 17 months, so I can say. 14, huh? Who's 14 here? No, there is a possibility. There is a possibility. People with fast track promotions have cleared in 14 also. The youngest CA in India is, I think, 18. 18. Youngest CA in India is 18. No, there is an 18 also. There is a woman with 18 also. Okay. So there is possibility. My point is very simple. You are very young. Very young you are. I am also very young only. I am not the kind of person to pay <laughs> Okay, now I, I talk like I'm sage and all, but I'm, I'm very young, okay? So I'm also very young, you are also very young. The reason, the only difference between you and me is that I've cleared, you have not. That's the only difference between both of us. At the end of the day, you are as friend of mine as I am friend of yours, okay? Have that kind of calm mentality answer you, okay? You have done 10th and 12th also with that kind of pressure only, okay? 10th and 12th also were around 10 papers, 12 papers. You didn't know what is F is equal to MA, what is MG equal to CG, some, some nonsense was going on. Okay, some physics you were learning, some Newton you were learning, some Alexander broke your head, I don't know what happened. Okay, one guy broke his head with an apple and suddenly one new law comes into picture. Some nonsense happened. You understood no shit of it. You understood no shit of it, but you still passed. Yes or no? Yes or no? You still passed understanding nothing of it. Did you clear your 10th board and come and say, I'm going to fail, life is bad, I don't know what to do in life, things are going very ugly for you? What happened now? Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. You have just grown some three, four years more and now you feel that you are matured enough. You can make your own life decisions. Nothing else. Okay. Don't grow the two horns. Not required. Okay. Pass. Then get some money in your hand and then you come and show off like that. Then you can do all the show offs you want. Until now, no show offs happening. Okay. Until 21, at least I never went to my parents and came and said, you don't know. I know better. Today, I can say that. Today, I can say that because I am earning. Today, I can say that I know I am earning. So, I can say I can make my own life decisions. That time, I could not make my own life decisions point is very simple. Please keep yourself calm and relaxed. It is okay. It is okay. Don't make weird choices enough. Okay. You are still as worth as a minor. You're still as worth as a minor and minor can plead minority has all the possibilities to change decisions in life. Okay. So you have all the possibilities to change decisions in life. That is why that immature you are right now. 
okay you might feel that i uh, you know i have a boyfriend i have a girlfriend i know what matured life is i have two heartbreaks and all happened no nothing 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 unukku end heartbreak indalo it is all useless heartbreaks only okay it was all infatuations nothing else abadi feel agudala it's okay it's okay it's all infatuations at the end of the day you might have gone through a phase you have gone through a phase the phase you have gone through is useless enough okay the, the phase you have gone through is useless enough it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you are very immature people feel like it it's not a bad thing it's a good thing in fact okay it's a good thing unless and until you don't start feeling you are mature okay you feel you are immature you behave like you are immature answer will automatically come in place okay you pass it's okay you fail it's okay everything should be as simple sir life has to go as simple as it's possible okay i can tell you that because i do not have a time bandwidth okay i'm standing here right now i'm standing here right now for those who know my schedule you will know that i only sleep for 2 hours a day that's all that is all my schedule is okay I, i'm that i'm that jam packed in life i am here at 6 o'clock in the morning taking a class completing my class going to office completing my office preparing for the next class preparing some materials one final book to prepare one inter book to prepare one global program i am doing that i have to prepare for four exams are pending for me too much shit is going on okay i have no life fund me okay but still today also you cannot come and see my face and tell me that rahul something is going wrong with you have you ever seen that kind of expression it's okay it's okay okay you have 24 hours in life uh, 24 hours in a day you have 24 hours in a day in that 22 hours also if you are struggling with life it's okay the balance to hours is what is appreciative if you are able to sleep that 2 hours also no you should feel that kind of happiness saying boss i slept for 2 hours right that is the kind of mentality which you go with it is okay to have a bad life it is more important to make it good it is more important to make it good there is one uh, there is one uh, saying which goes in the market you know when you go and see a beggar what is the first thought which comes to your head you feel disgusted you feel disgusted yes you always come and say boss i should study myself so much that the beggar i should not become a beggar yes or no yes or no bad mentality bad mentality mentality is what grow yourself so much that tomorrow you are able to do something for others yes or no that's the kind of positive shift that's the kind of positive shift that's where you have this yaar uh, microsoft owner bill gates sir bill gates that's where you have people like bill gates and all you know having earned so much in crores and all now he's the biggest philanthropist of in, uh, world he spends he he quit ceo of microsoft earning so much just to do social service just to do social service imagine right people are like that people are like that it's it's about a change of mind that's all okay you might feel disgusted with that kind of person and at the same time you can come and say boss why don't i do something good for him yes or no that's the change shift okay your positive thinking makes an impact for you in life you need to go with that kind of positive thinking the negative thinking can be done by anyone okay anyone can today come and say i will not pass nothing big about it okay if you have already decided you will not pass you will not pass but if you come and say let's try to pass who knows maybe we'll pass yes or no yes that's when the impact shift happens and that's when you will come and say okay if there is a possibility to pass let's try who knows some day maybe you know you might have written as pathetic as possible but the examiner would be extremely happy with his wife today he might have come and given full marks you don't know it's as if telling lottery is going to click you don't know whether it will happen or not but today if it clicks who knows <laughs> the problem with you is you are still worried about the tax not about the money you remember the question of uh, salaries hra and rfa case yes it is about you becoming a rich not about you paying more tax i am okay to get lottery as long as i am paying extra tax that's okay that's okay for me yes the point is that only the point is that only aim for happiness if it comes great if it doesn't come okay it was anyway not coming it was still not coming if you are already aiming for sadness what will happen you will be extremely happy when the happiness happens but then you will always come and blame everyone else in the world saying boss my life is only pathetic you are only enjoying life that is the problem with all the cs you know you come you sit here my friend is going to bcom he is doing this uh, he is going to party he is doing this uh, he has four girlfriends he has enjoyed life for four iphones he is keeping gone to dubai gone to mumbai bye bye four years later when you qualify what will be your package what will be his package 
in your package you can go for around the world in this package what will you do he will be coming and next to shankara he'll come and say boss let me establish tables for you let me establish chair for you that will be his salary yes or no it's not about what is happening today it's about what you are going to do for yourself tomorrow right they say no it is okay to be born poor but it's not good to die rich uh, sorry <laughs> but it is not good to die poor it is not good to die poor whose hands it is your own hands yes either it is in your hands or it is in the hands of the wealthy husband you have either way either way for some people not for you some people for some people right yes yes this is all that i had to say i am done with the correcta seven ku mudikrom pare yes correcta seven ku mudikrom technically it's a six and a half days class so six and a half days class we have taken so much time uh, here and there one day i came late one day you came late one day i did not start properly whatever it is right effectively we have done about uh, two to seven huh? so in five hours into seven days what was the slot what was the slot 7 to 4 sir okay 35 kit that is 40 hours effectively we have ignored all that leave lunch and all those things 35 hours in 35 hours we have completed our fast track thing this is what i think i could have done see this is what i think i could have done i don't know if i have justified enough for you or not but yes if i have justified enough good for you let's meet after you let's meet and that is no i am looking for my treat i am looking for my treat okay let's meet after you qualify inter final will anyway meet final will anyway meet let's meet after you qualify inter we will have a cup of coffee together and then we'll discuss whether you want to do article ship or you don't want to do article ship whether you want to do audit tax i know that kind of questions also i'll come up okay and then we will also discuss what happened during a year journey so that you can come for the next class and you can enhance your juniors that also we will do okay maybe in the marathon class most likely your friends should be joining you for a small talk small talk okay they might join you on that small talk day they will come and tell you what their ca journey was looking like where they went where they did what they did and how they did not do right okay so that you can learn from that also and then you can be super impressed about how they passed also okay yes you want me to call failures also you are there no ada ninge yes or no it's, it's okay it's okay that's what you know it's about you changing your failure story into a success story okay so let's make your success stories and then we'll come back and say you know that day we'll put a news flash we failed for four attempts and then we came back in the first attempt you've seen that kind of comedy you know some faculty and all will come and say this woman was failing for 15 attempts she came to my class and she passed in the first attempt adu va panu whatever works enik enna publicity thonudhu adu poduvom okay if nothing works out i'll come and say this woman traveled for 4 hours a day and came to my class so therefore i have more adu va podum just dedication whatever works yes at the end of the day you have to pass people that is all the whole thought is clear great that's all i have to say uh, anything else you want to know anything about my personal life no no let's not discuss today off records okay let's let's come back after uh, sir is there a separate class for capital gains intermediate edo ramayan mudichadukaprom uh miss jayshree i think you should refer class number 2 i think you should refer class number 2 the day number 2 should have your capital gains ah uh, 2 3 whatever it is okay yes you can refer all this uh, clarificatory provis- uh, thing people for those who did not attend all the classes probably all the videos are there on youtube all the videos are there on youtube i am editing the version also i am editing the version also the live versions will be available on the shankara channel the edited versions will be available on my own youtube channel i will probably shoot it and put it probably by tomorrow most likely by tomorrow you should have the edited versions the un- live versions are there in shankara's platform directly okay so you can watch it there also in case you feel like something is missed out if you want to go through a marathon last marathon of november is there in uh, shankara ignore that ignore that amendments have come in we will do it currently new we'll do it fresh okay great it's perfect i've taken too much of your time but yes let's let's go with a good spirit out of this place uh, whatever your balance subjects are there just work it out uh, i've been hearing news i'm not sure i'm just letting you know i've been hearing news that we could probably roll out a idt free fast track also could 
could i am not sure about it we are yet to discuss with the faculty in case that happens it will happen on a weekends it will happen on a weekends and the faculty only needs about uh, 10 12 hours is what i hear so he will do only one saturday and one sunday that's all okay one saturday sunday he might do an idt fast track for you again it will be free of cost for you but your choice your choice i don't know when it will happen i don't know if it will happen also or not dt is happening so yeah yes 60 marks we'll cover 40 marks you take care okay so it might happen if it happens or not i will let you know the broadcast channel it will be broadcasted for you if not anyway it will be there on youtube also for you great perfect have a wonderful journey ahead people i look forward to everyone uh, ignoring your past looking forward to your future along with the present in hand along with the present in hand let's come back in april and meet together and then crack our may come back in when is the result ra july yeah august july let's come back in july august and let's have a discussion about how things went off okay yes, perfect uh not my practice but in case uh, if you're okay let's take a photo and then leave yeah. thank you people everyone on online also have a wonderful journey all the best for your exams